Another Friday, another rainy Friday. Does that happen every time to me? Yes. If you guys were in the New York City area last night, you know that there was an incredible storm. Very powerful. I don't know what the deal was. It was flashing lightning, making thunder, making rain all night. <laughs> uh, I've never really seen a street, uh, uh, storm like that, to be honest. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was wild. It was wild. It kind of feels like the end times are coming, but you know, we don't have to worry about that too much. We don't have to worry about that too much because, uh, you know, here's another problem right now. I'm noticing I needed to quickly do this thing to turn off the little shaky autofocus thing. That drives me crazy. I'm sure it drives you crazy too. Camera problems. All right, so check it out, you guys. Today, today we're gonna keep doing TypeScript. More TypeScript, more React. It's gonna be super fun. I'm really pumped about it. You know, we made some pretty good progress last time. We're, we're kind of working on this sessions page. I think it's a really fun project to do on stream. So we're gonna do a bit more of it. Um, there's kind of an idea that I wanted to check out today, uh, which is to kind of make this thing a little bit more like, look, right now you can do it. You can, you can kind of, you can kind of like inspect what's going on with the database with this thing, right? Let me, let me pull up a, uh, a window here so we can actually get back to business, you know? This is the thing we were working on, sessions page. No currently running sessions. Okay, we should make one of those. Should do that. Should make a transaction maybe. Maybe we can have it do something. All right, so if you go over here, you can probably see some stuff happening. Uh, I need to hit this up for a second. But um, you can see, you know, there's active statements. I, I made this look a little bit prettier, and I think now that I've unstashed my changes, it should uh, add some of that stuff. You can see like the age of the session, the age of the transaction, the age of the query. There's this moment JS thing. Maybe you guys know about it. It uh, it has quite a lot of formatting things like relative time. You know, you you want to have that Web 3.0 look. A few seconds ago, you know, you, everybody likes that, right? <laughs> So I'm using that to uh, show the age of these things. I think it's pretty cool, but check this out. Here's what I really want to do. You can like figure stuff out here, right? You can like go to this, you can see what's it do, what it's doing. Maybe I want to add more stuff, memory usage, whatever, but I really want to be able to like cancel stuff too. I feel like that's a common thing that people are always trying to do, cancel their stuff as it's in flight. So what I really wanted to try to do today was like add a little button over here that's like cancel this session maybe like cancel this query, cancel this transaction maybe, not that we can really do that right now, but I feel like this cancellation idea, it's a pretty powerful idea. You know, you could do a lot. I think operators wanna kill stuff that's kind of problematic. <laughs> that sounds really wrong, but you know, we should use a, a, a more neutral word like, like shut down, terminate, end, end the process. But people wanna do that stuff and uh, I wanna kind of add a way to make that happen. You can do that from SQL in this database. Uh, you know, if I said, like, let's say, right, I, I can do it, actually do it on this example. I've got this kind of slow query going that's just sleeping for a thousand seconds. And so if I go and open up another session over here, I can say show queries. You know, I can see this one, select PG sleep a thousand, and I could terminate it, right? I can say cancel query, and I think it'll kill it, right? Cancel it, I should say. Over 9,000, yo, Vilter P. What's up, man? It's good to see you. It's good to see you. It was good to see you in the park the other day playing that trombone as well. I think my friends, do you guys play Watermelon Sugar? Is that in the rep? Because my friends were going through the park and they saw a brass band playing Watermelon Sugar and I wasn't sure if that was you or another brass band, another set of pretenders trying to become you guys the the true brass masters but anyway yeah you know everybody knows that yo every layer thanks for that Risa. because happy friday joins, to you too joins, how's it going joins, i hope joins, i hope you had a good vacation right to I know you were momentarily gone maybe you're back maybe you're tuning in from the woods i don't know but i hope that that treated you well appreciate that resub it wasn't you guys not watermelon sugar okay i think that's 
I think you should add that to your rep though. You know, it's a great song, good for brass. I think that people are gonna appreciate that stuff for sure. But uh, yeah, so you know, we've got this cancellation. I think we've also got like a cancel session thing going on maybe if I do like a show sessions and I've got this other session going over here. I think I can say cancel session. Does that work? Cancel session. Yeah, so it worked. I mean, nothing really showed up, but it did kill it. Cancel it. So I wanna add this stuff to the web UI. I think that'd be pretty sick. You're ramping back up, may or may not stream this weekend. Yeah, yeah, that vacation time. That vacation time feels really good. It's important to get that vacation time. Tune out. Yo, Jay Phils, thanks so much for the 250 this process bits. This really doesn't want that. to be canceled. <laughs> oh my God, the machine is rebelling. This process does not want to be canceled. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to wax poetic about cancellation in the abstract sense, so I'm not gonna do that, but I think somebody who is a little bit more quick with their words, they could say something about that. Uh, but I'm not gonna try. What's up, Kadobes? How's it going? Um, yeah, so, all right. Cancellation. Look, here's what we're gonna do. In this web page, I want a little button. I want it to be over here. I want it to say cancel statement. I want it to be over here. I want it to say cancel session. So we're gonna make it happen. I think the first thing that we want to do probably is to figure out what API we already use for this cancellation stuff in SQL. Cause I think there's one that exists and I think that it's not just a purely SQL thing. Um, and I think hopefully we'll be able to invoke it uh, from the web UI if there is, isn't yeah, if there's an endpoint for it already, we can use that. If there isn't, we'll make one, we'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. So yeah, you got the status server. I think this is like a proto buff thing, right? And I think think that in general, we've made some endpoints for many of these things. Like this, I know that if you go over here and you ask for, you got this underscore status business, right? And I think that this is gonna to point to this list sessions call. And I think theoretically I should be able to add one for this cancellation stuff as well. You can't cancel cockroaches. That's exactly right. Cockroaches are the one uncancelable thing. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's true, but uh, it's, it's a bit harder. You would hope, you would hope. Um, I think like over here, there's a way we can list all the stuff that's going on here. You know, you got your, yeah, where are these defined anyway? You know, that's what I want to figure out. Maybe if I just search for like local sessions, I'll find a way. I'll find a way to find where this stuff is defined. I don't really see anything for that at the moment. Do you know someone who legitimately moved from proto buff to flat buffers, heard some fuss, but you died? <laughs> What's up, Crystal Gaver? Um, so yeah, I mean, flat buffers, oh, it died. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, look, the, the flat buffers thing, like they are good, right? They're zero copy for sure, but they're kind of hard to use. Have you ever tried to use them? You have to like construct them backwards. Um, and it's so easy to mess it up. We did a little prototype of this actually for some of the kind of more high performance stuff because proto buffs, you really do have to copy stuff back and forth quite a bit and it's a bit, expensive but the flat buffers yeah i mean flat buffers if you need it to be screamingly fast performance i think you should try it but i will say that it's hard to use you know it's definitely a bit hard to use um yeah so how am i gonna figure this out maybe if i search for if i search for things that use this that's not quite right either i'm a bit I don't actually really know where we define these API endpoints on the web. It's kind of unclear to me. It's kind of unclear to me. Maybe if I search for this underscore status thing, I'll find out. Underscore status. Oh, this is looking promising. This is looking, but uh, no, this is a test file. It's always fun doing this code spelunking. If you don't know what you're talking about, your tools are really quite limited. I wonder maybe if I do a grep, maybe the fact that I'm limiting it to .go files is my problem here. Um, it's kind of a lot of stuff. 
Uh, maybe if I search for... Hmm. Yeah, where the heck is this stuff defined? Is it this? Package server server? Package server status? I feel like it's got to be something like that, right? Yo, Syph, what is going on? Welcome. Happy Friday to you. Why is my, like... Oh, did my keyboard become unplugged? Is that the problem? <laughs> uh, I hope you're doing well, man. I hope you're doing well. We're doing some spelunking, as we often do, to try to understand where these web endpoints are defined. I don't know. I don't understand why it's so difficult to figure this out. Happy Friday, Cthulhu. Cthulhu is watching. Spelunky poggers. <laughs> Uh, I wish it was that kind of spelunky. You know, like, how, how hard could it really be to figure this out? I don't get that. Stray Basilisk, what's up? What is up? Um, why? Why? Maybe if I look at, like, how this thing is kind of defined... Oh yeah, you see a status server provides a RESTful status API. Maybe it's sort of just like implicit. So we don't actually explicitly set up these web routes and there's some magic that this thing uses to produce these endpoints. Data Register data gateway. Bank, data banks. Yo, Chris Cody, thanks for that follow. I appreciate that. Register gateway starts the gateway, reverse proxy, the proxies proxies HTTP requests to the appropriate gRPC endpoints. That sounds relevant. I wonder if this is just some auto-generated protobuf magic that we didn't actually even write. I mean, the real question is like, yeah, okay. So I guess these are some things, right? These are like, for each of these handle methods, it kind of looks like we're specifying, if you, if you do a get on slash underscore status wrapped. Okay, here it is. Wow, so it, it lives in this like heinous generated file, all these endpoints. And now I guess the question is, ah, this is looking good. So we got the cancel query API, the cancel session API, and they are, they are used at their gets. Oh, that's kind of hilarious. Uh, Router anywhere? I think this is like kind of a crazy router kind of thing. Project IDE, man, do I have some commands for you, exab, exabyte? You got your project? You got your IDE? <laughs> Look at that. If you had just put exclamation point before each of those words, you could have answered your questions. <laughs> Isn't it magic? It is truly magic, I think. Okay, so check it out. This is actually kind of sick. I think that means that really we can literally just run these get things from i mean out of curiosity what would happen if i said status cancel does this no not found i guess it would be cancel query hold on let me look at the status cancel query node id what's that about do i need to specify a particular node id Hmm. Cancel query, right. Oh, this is pretty cool. So I wonder how I, pa I pass these parameters in. What am I doing? Hey, so basically, I think you can, I guess I should probably put a you bit more a information in that exclamation world. point project thing. But basically what I'm working on is enhancing this page here, which is a kind of administrative console page on this database, CockroachDB, to include some more information about the active sessions, as well as providing controls if you want to terminate a session or terminate a query. That's kind of the project. That's the goal. Um, right now, we're just kind of poking around, trying to figure out what the APIs are that already exist for doing stuff like cancellation. We're doing a, I think we, we figured something out, which is exciting, but we're not totally done. I think one thing that I don't understand right now <laughs> is for this cancellation guy, how do I actually specify the query ID to cancel? 
right? We have these path params. But where is it actually? Is it this forward status? No. Like, where's actually the, the kind of call that, oh, is it this? Local request status cancel query. Reading this generated code, I have to say, it's not really that fun. So here I get my node ID from the path param. So that's what this was. And the question is, how do I get that? How do I get that? Is it like a form parameter? So what if node ID? Well, I don't even know. Populate query parameters. I guess that's not what we really care about. Lines logger. Hey, well, look, I didn't write this code. Some program wrote it for me. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to edit the program that writes the code? No way. Populate query parameters. Okay, so we pass in this proto request. The proto request has a node ID and a query ID and a username. That's pretty interesting. The question is, how do we add the stuff that isn't just node ID, right? I want to say it has to do with this form. But what I don't quite get is like, what I don't quite get is like whether or where, where or whether it actually even grabs out the kind of non URL parameters in a sense, or like the form parameters. Edit the auto generator. Yeah, maybe for another stream. <laughs> I did hear something kind of scary, you guys, which is that this GoGo protobuf thing, you know, you know about GoGo protobuf? It's sort of the like, I don't know, it's like a set of extensions for Golang protobuf generation. It's kind of like unowned right now. Uh, and it's not getting any updates. <laughs> and we rely on that thing pretty heavily. So that's kind of scary. You think it's a query param you add? Yeah, how come it says this form stuff though, you know? Parsed form data, the, both the URL fields query parameters. So you're saying if I said like, just out of curiosity, if we said something like query ID equals this, would that do something? Oh, snap, you're totally right. <laughs> how about that? How about that? Okay, that's actually pretty solid. <laughs> mm. So honestly, honestly, we don't we have kind of like a lot of what we need to make this happen. Um, I think one thing that I don't quite get is since we are using all of this React Redux magic on the front end, which we can check out now. So let's go back to this sessions page that we've been hacking on for a few streams. Um, and <laughs> yes, ancient, ancient. I think like, yeah, one question I have is, what does it look like to make a, a button <laughs> in this world? And the second question I have is, once I have a button, how do I actually cause the button to do an arbitrary URL request, given that all of this URL requesting stuff is so nicely kind of hidden behind Redux's magic that so far I haven't had to learn about it. <laughs> so those are the kind of questions that I need to start asking myself. I guess, you know, what we could do is probably copy. There is another thing that does something very similar somewhere. There's this activate business. So I guess what I could do is kind of copy whatever this does. Um, Cause I think it does actually send a, a request to somewhere and we could just kind of do what it does. That sounds kind of good. Why isn't there documentation for this API? Um, there kind of is. The reason that it's a little bit janky looking like is that it is auto generated from a set of proto buffs. Um, so if I if I were to go to the proto buff definition, I think that there's a little bit more documentation. Um, so for example, for example, I mean, I guess the actual definition of the of the um, oh, this is interesting. This actually has the entire route, so I could have I could have searched for this as as well. But anyway, like this RPC doesn't really have the documentation, but the request does. Um, so I feel like that's something. I don't know. It's a, the reason that it's just like this is that it's all internal stuff. Janky hack, mate. Yeah, exactly. By the way, you guys, uh, I did 
there is something kind of cool, which is that uh, I did add some uh, subscriber badges. So you can, if you are a subscriber, and I know some of you are, I think if you go to your like badge preferences, you can add the really, really cool emote badges that I, I commissioned and you can have those in your uh, in your chat messages. I think they're sick, you should check those out. Uh, is it a cat? No, it's actually, it's like a horse head mask. I just, I just put it there for, for kicks because I kind of like how it looks in the background. <laughs> if it was a cat just hanging there, I would be pretty suspicious that it might be dead. Um, <laughs> but so hopefully, yeah, hopefully we can all notice that it's just a kind of inanimate horse mask. Oh, does the founder's badge like override it? That's kind of obnoxious. That's really sad actually, because I feel like, <laughs> uh, it's, it's fat. It's sad because I think that we have, we have a lot of founders and the founders are kind of the people that I want to honor with these beautiful sub badges, you know? That's a bummer. That is truly a bummer. And I don't have enough sub slots to make them just emotes. <laughs> I'll have to, I don't know, I'll have to do something about that. Maybe maybe over time we can put them into regular emotes. Um, but anyway, so let's actually go ahead and check out how this diagnostic stuff works. Statements, table, content, I wanna say. Um, Right, so there's this, oh, it shows a modal. Oh man, so it's kind of complicated. If I click this, it's gonna actually show, whoa. I guess it would be nice to have a modal for cancellation, right? Or would it be better to just sort of click it and it automatically just goes? I don't know. What happens when I click this out of curiosity? Ooh, it does like a little, oh my goodness. It's pretty intense, honestly. Uh. Even a JavaScript confirm box would be good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like while I'm here, like I, I might as well kind of copy. Wow, this looks really screwed up for some reason. Oh, it's because of this, I see. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, since I've got this, this little like toast notification, I feel like I can probably just copy that. Um, let's check out how that works. So. If we go to this show modal guy, what is going on with this? By the way, if, if you all are just tuning in and you haven't watched me hack on React stuff before, the most important thing for you to know is that I don't at all know what I'm doing with React. Um, and I've just been kind of following the pattern. I've been learning a little bit. I know some basics at this point, but I'm very much a newbie. So if you see me doing something really dumb, I wanna say, you know, Backseat gaming is allowed and encouraged, so to speak. Um, but yeah, one plane, one plane's got one of those uh, subscriber badges. Look at that; <laughs> it's beautiful. I, I'm so happy with with the guy who I commissioned these from. Uh, Computers hooked into over a thousand data banks. Yo, the world. Terra Nuva, thanks for the follow. So the question is: All right, what on OK Handler? What does this guy do? Use callback. Use callback is a React thing. And I guess the point is that, the point is that this whole thing lives in a callback, presumably, so that the page doesn't have to block on whatever this stuff is doing. And when we call activate, oh boy, this is becoming magic, huh? Map dispatch the prop. So this is another Redux thing, I wanna say. I'm fairly sure that these dispatch things are done by Redux. Yeah, exactly. Anything that starts with use is probably a hook. Bank's too big. That's I have interesting. to narrow down the search. Hey, Gene QA Sor, how's guessing... it going? Thank you so much for that follow. I really appreciate it. Um, hope you're having a good Friday. Uh, looking forward to PL talk later. If you all aren't following Gene, by the way, you should, she does a really cool Friday stream that kind of happens after mine, which is they kind of do like a, it's like a sort of seminar panel where she brings on a couple of smart programming language experts and they chat about uh, programming, programming language stuff. I've rated them a couple of times, so you might've seen her stream already, but definitely give her a follow. Look into React hooks. Yeah, I probably should do this. <laughs> the, 
the dream of this stream is that I poke around blindly, people tell me what I'm doing wrong, and then I magically learn React and Redux without having to actually read the documentation since, you know, during the week, to be honest, I don't have a lot of time to do that anyway. <laughs> I don't really get to program all that much during the week. So this is my, this is my time, so to speak. But yeah, I mean, so basically like here, here's, here's kind of like the thing that you would do if you were me in this situation. You figure out what was here before, you figure out what this pattern is doing, and you basically cargo cult it. <laughs> and that is probably what I'm going to do with this as well. Um, and we'll see how it goes. So it kind of looks like what, what they do here is they've got this activate guy, which calls into this dispatch thing, which takes all of the state of the admin UI, which I guess we wouldn't have to really change. And the thing that's really getting to change is probably whatever this function does. Okay, that's not exactly what I was expecting to see, to be totally honest. I was sort of expecting to see something like something that actually goes ahead and calls an endpoint. Uh, I don't know. Oh, that is kind of that, right? Cockroach UI statements. So there's something called a saga. <laughs> I've heard of people telling me about sagas before. This seems like it, ah, uh, this kind of seems like it's relevant. This seems like it's actually some API calls, right? Check this out. It's saying, I mean, it doesn't have any comments, which makes me sad, but it's saying create diagnostics report saga. I think a saga is kind of like a sequence of like blocking operations is my guess. Uh, and it actually does some API calls if you check it out, I think. Hopefully this is the bottom of the chain, right? It does look like it. So you got some functions that actually call protobuf endpoints, expect certain response types back. It tells you what the endpoint is, the API endpoint. So that's cool. And I guess, I guess this is seeming pretty good. I, I, maybe we could sort of start from here. I could define a saga for my new thing and then sort of work my way up the stack, integrating things all the way until I have something that I can actually click, like a little button that calls the saga, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe, this, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> it's going to be, it'll be, it'll be an adventure, but uh, I think it might work. So yeah, api.ts, it looks like this is a giant file that doesn't really look like it's auto-generated, right? Looks like somebody actually wrote this thing. So I think we would kind of just have to define some new ones for these cancellation endpoints and uh, take it from there. So we'll do that. A romancing saga, if you will, cut the eerie music. Interesting spelling of eerie there. <laughs> um, actually, wait, let's put it next to the sessions request response because that's the thing that we are kind of in the realm of, so to speak. So we're going to have a cancel well, you want to start with cancel query or cancel session? Let's start with cancel session, I guess. So cancel session request message. Okay. <laughs> I, that makes a lot of sense, actually. I wasn't sure if you were going for that pun, <laughs> but it, suppose it, it should have been obvious that you were. So I've got already these. These are the ones that are auto-generated, right? This is like server PB has these protobuf generated methods that we're sort of hooking into. <laughs> Um, so I think that these should already exist. Cancel session request. And here you got your response message. So I'll call this cancel session response. Um, cool. And then I guess what we need to do is sort of, I mean, I don't know why these are gets. That's another question. Like maybe that's something that we can actually modify. It seems a bit wrong that these would be guests, gets. Um, and it looks like you can actually change that. Like you can sort of say in the proto buff that you can ask this to be presumably any method. Um, I'm not sure if there's an advantage in this case to making this a post besides the fact that it's just like unesthetic to make it a get. No Golang community edition. Yeah, I know it's really sad. I don't know why that is, but I guess they got to make money. It's such a good editor though. I think it's, I mean, for me it's worth it, but my job pays for it, so I would get if you didn't have that situation. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't really know. Does anybody know who's a web guru? Like, if you make something a get versus a post, is there some, like, thing that you will screw up? Or is it just sort of like the semantics are gross? Nobody likes the, the bad semantics. Yo, bro, Hanser, what's up? <laughs> Big O2N time. Yeah, I agree. I need to, I think I need to make those emotes. They're like too good to reserve for badges, to be honest. Um, yeah, I don't know. Get or post, I don't know. I don't know. Get is supposed to be item potent, right? Should be consistent with that side effects. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely not an item potent thing then. So I suppose I could change this to be a post um, and regenerate these protos and sort of see what happens. I wonder what will happen. Let's try that out. Why don't we just start with this? Front end might be requesting on a get, so there might be side effects. Uh, make proto buff. For cancel, you can also issue an HTTP delete. Yeah, I guess that's true. I guess that's true. But is there any real point to using like patch and delete and stuff like that? You know, people like their API endpoints to be semantically meaningful, I suppose. But are you really gaining anything with that? Or is it just sort of like you're sort of showing off, you know? <laughs> <laughs> if you want to use the keywords properly, go for delete. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So let's see. Now that we've regenerated this, what does it look like inside of the... Wherever the heck that thing was. I guess it was that like status GWPB thing. It's a post. Okay, that was easy. <laughs> We did it. Magic. <laughs> Love it. Okay, cool. So we have a post. One endpoint for entire CRUD instead of multiple with semantic requests. The data bank's too big. I have to narrow down oh, the I search. See what you mean. Yeah, that's How a good point. That? That's kind of nice. guessing. Especially for things that are like really user facing. I agree that you should do more of that stuff. Hey, GUI3, thanks for the follow. Another benefit is that you can use method based filters later if you want to influence interaction API wide. Method-based filters. I don't know quite if I understand what you mean by that, but I guess you're saying that like, you could give me, like I can say, give me all of the different API endpoints that expect delete or something like that. And that's sort of how you know things, something like that. Maybe that's what you're saying. All deletes require a role of admin. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you could do something like that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, I think that there are some, there's a, like a little bit of authentication business with this that honestly is a little bit suspicious because if you look at this definition, this canceled query request, it does take a username, right? But I mean, there's really nothing stopping you from just setting this username to anything that you want. So I do feel a little bit skeptical. I want to see if anybody actually even consults that username. Um, just out of curiosity. Uh, I guess it would be, yeah, cancel query request. So username, who looks at this thing? Yeah, I mean, some sketchy stuff. This is some extremely sketchy stuff. I think like there, <laughs> there isn't really a security problem here because these status endpoints are like not really currently allowed unless you're an admin. Uh, uh, but we need to fix this. I mean, this is this is really some janky, janky, janky stuff. Um, hmm. It's good to know. I'm going to note that down. I'm going to note that down, come back to it later, for sure. But let's kind of think what's next here. Right, so we were going to add this saga. That's what we were doing. We were learning about what a saga is, and we were kind of making it happen. So I think what we want to do here is probably make something called that just like invokes this API method. That's kind of seemingly what the point, the pattern is here. So I think we'll want to have something called like cancel session cancels the session with a given ID. And one question, one question is that like they do take this node ID parameter and I do wonder, I suppose we probably do need to pass that in. It seems a little bit sad. I guess the front end, like since you are getting this session information from the API that gives you all the sessions, that does include node ID, so you do have that information. I do think it's kind of an odd choice just in general to make you have the
the node ID in this cancellation request because you really don't want to have to, you want to sort of treat the cluster as like something that is uniform. You don't want to have to know what session is running on what node or anything like that. What's the library in use on the front end to call the RPC methods on the server? Um, it's some like, I, it's essentially like Redux wraps all Dictabax, of this stuff. So Dictabax, I don't know if there's Dictabax. something lower level than Redux you're interested in, but uh, Redux is kind of the thing that I'm touching. Um, but yeah, welcome uh, code Haka, by the way. So I guess it just looks like we pass in the whole request. We don't do anything else fancy. So I'll just pass in a cancel session request message. Maybe has a timeout. It gives me back a promise of cancel session response message. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you on that. But it may not really matter in this case. Um, I think there's like the... The reason we probably did it this way is that otherwise you'd have to do some kind of fan out, <laughs> which is probably sad because not every node knows about every session. So you'd have to do a fan out where the gateway node would have to like probably just send the same request to all the nodes in the cluster. And that's not really that scalable. If you have a node, you know, a cluster of a thousand nodes or something that's like a thousand RPCs, either that or every node has to know all the sessions, which is also unscalable. So I, I suppose that there's a good reason for doing it this way. Um, Cancel sessions response. And then I guess this is where we get to specify the URL. Um, so we'll say cancel session. And then I guess we need to also pass in, I guess we, we probably need to like format.sprintf this thing. <laughs> it seems a little odd, honestly, but Oh, we don't have, this is not go. This is not go. There's no format.sprintf. That makes no sense. Um, yeah. The computer's hooked into over so a I guess, I guess with this thing, you can just interpolate by putting a variable name inside or something like that. Node ID. That looks like it works. Yo, thanks for that follow man cow <laughs> and I Mel. I have to narrow down the Appreciate search. Appreciate you guys. How are you going to do that? by guessing. So what is this? Does anybody know what the heck this is about? Timeout fetch, it takes... It takes a builder, something called a rack. T request, it seems to be like a general thing. And we seem to sometimes pass null for it. Or no, that's maybe just us. No, yeah, we sometimes pass null for this request. Oh, maybe these are like post parameters or something. I don't know. Oh, I see. Maybe in these cases, nobody actually needs, there's nothing in these messages, so we just ignore it, right? This list session request thing probably takes no. <laughs> Yo, you guys, I tried to fix this and I guess it did not fix it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's torture. Search. You're How torture. Are you do that? By guessing. <laughs> Carlos. Carlos. Alpha. Ro. Dev. Sorry, I butchered your name, but thanks for that follow. Look, does anybody know what the deal is with this stuttering OBS sound thing? I feel like what happens is that if my computer is busy and it tries to play a sound like that, it like freaks out. Something like that. I tried to like re-nice the processes to have a really high priority and that didn't really help the matters apparently. It was working before I tried this stream. I did a whole test with it. I like did a, you know, sort of sample stream to the Twitch inspector and stuff like that. But I guess there's just some variable that I still haven't quite figured out. But whatever, whatever, we'll just have to deal with it. Um, yeah, so I guess, right, coming back to this API.ts thing, I think the idea is that if I have a API message that doesn't have any parameters and the convention seems to be you put a pre, uh, you know, underscore prefix on it and just don't do anything with it. But we do seem to need it in this case for a couple of things. So I'll just name it rec like we do down here. And then I don't know why you need to add any. I don't really know what that means, but we can just copy the pattern, I guess, and see what happens. All right. Cancels the session with the given ID on the given node, something like that. 
Yo, Portuguese captain, what's up? It could be clipping to volume levels those playback significantly louder than your mic volume. Hmm, that's it. I don't think it's that. I, you're probably right that I should turn that down. It is a little bit loud. I'll just do that in the little mixer. Um, but you know, since I, I tested it before and there was other volumes going, I don't know. I don't. I think it's just like CPU load is is unhappy. Hard to stream and do this like other stuff on the same computer. Um, what's my CPU usage during the events? I don't know. I should probably figure that out, but I haven't done it just yet. Um, all right. Cool. All right. So back to this sagas business, right? I think what we, we probably have our, what we need to actually make or do we? I think we probably have what we need. It sort of seems like the first thing that you do in one of these sagas is to just kind of call the basic API backend thing, backend API thing with a request, which you can get based on the information from your action. Payload action seems to be something that is coming from our code, it just seems to wrap something called a Redux action though. And then this diagnostic reports payload, this is presumably like the internal type of the stuff that you need to do something with in an API method, something like that. So I guess what I probably wanna do is make another file because it looks like we separate each of these sagas into uh, files based on their sort of use and this is like a session saga so i think i'm going to make a new file for this called sessions sagas.ts sessions sagas how is obs set to capture the alert no it's like a it's like a browser plugin you know you can do a browser plugin and you point it at like the streamlabs web page that does the that thing like the data bank's too big. fires an alert I when an alert happens, search. you know what I mean? How are you gonna do that? By guessing. Yo, SNES23, thanks for that follow. Hey, Oscar M, how's it going? How is it going? Um, so I'm gonna make, who knows what a function star is? Anybody have any idea what that means? Yeah, somebody put, I think there's like these Twitch spam bots that like paste stuff like that. You're a mod, bro, bro Hunter. I think you can only see that stuff because you're a mod and you can, you can ban those people if you want. You have that power. But I did it this time. I need to have mod training. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'm going to make something called the cancel sessions saga. I need to have like a contest. <laughs> That's what all the cool streams do. They're like, enter by contest and you will become a mod. Um, and I guess I also am going to need to make a payload for this. I mean, it seems like there's quite a lot of files that get used for any of these things, you know? Like, it's, I'm a little bit, I don't know quite why we have to have so many files for this stuff. Maybe, what if I, what would if I just put these payloads in the very same file, just as a, as a test? I'm going to try that out. Yo, psycho lol. Thanks for that follow. Yeah, what is function star? What is function star? I don't know what that is. You tell me, I'm just copying the pattern here. Over a thousand data banks Thanks the for the world. follow, Oscar. Um, so, I mean, it's really just like a little struct with a single thing inside. So I'm gonna make, I don't, yeah, you like, theoretically, like I could just pass in the whole, like how come I don't just make this a payload action of like, the cancel session request message, you know? I don't know quite why I wouldn't just do that. You know, this is like really what I want. I want the node ID, I want the session ID. The username is super sketchy, but we'll fix that later. Function star is a generator function. They return a generator object. That is interesting. That is interesting. That is very good to know. So I guess these tries automatically return a generator object or something like that. Thanks for that. 
Um, oh, it's these yields. It's kind of like Python. So yield is like a generator thing. That makes a lot of sense. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Um, so yeah, we'll make, I guess we'll make something for this. I don't know, because it's, a, it's just a type, right? It's not a struct. So we'll say like cancel session payload. It's gonna take, I mean, really we want it to just be the same name as the stuff inside of these things though, right? I mean, maybe what we want to do is just have an I cancel session request. This is the interface that we care about. Let's try that. I'm going to just try that just for kicks. We'll see what happens if I just do it that way. So I'm going to have this be an I cancel session request. Um, and this needs to be imported. It's ES7. You got lost after ES6. That's interesting. Interesting. I'm... Uh, I'm currently living in ES anything land, so. And then I guess, you know, I guess what we can just say is like, call, does this say, what is call exactly? Like, do I need to make, do I need to make this post? Or is this something that has nothing to do with like, Redux Saga effect. Wow, I have no clue what that would be about. I should probably learn what these things are about because I don't know. Spawns a saga on each action dispatched to the store that matches pattern. <laughs> well, yeah, I basically have no clue what this stuff is. <laughs> What's up? Sm smells like pale and two two. How are you guys doing? You don't like the yellow and red? <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, not cancel session saga, but cancel session. Just cancel session. And I'm gonna have to pass in. I think I should be able to pass in just action on its own, right? I guess not. Oh, maybe this needs to be. What is this? This is something else. I need to make one of these. This is like some kind of action struct that gives me the type of it plus its payload. Okay. <laughs> no clue what this is really about, but we can certainly pretend that we know. So we're going to make this the cancel session action. And I guess what it really wants to take I mean, I want to just have it take the whole darn I cancel session request, you know? Um, so let's try to do that and see what happens. I cancel session request, and it is a payload action of... Huh. I don't know, man. I don't know. Like what? Oh, interesting. So an action in Redux has something called a type. Actions must have a type field that indicates the type of action being performed. Types can be defined as constants and imported from another module. It's better used to use strings for type than symbols because strings are serializable. I, is this just so, it's just, just like make to make like a unique name for the kind of thing that you're doing or something like I don't really get the point of that at all but hey what are you gonna do we will make a const for this so in, in this particular case like is this used sorry let's undo that for a quick sec like when I go to this particular quote unquote action type where does this get used it seems to get used kind of all over the place um It kind of seems like the idea, is this personal project? No, this is, yeah, you got that, you got this. It's a kind of side project for the company that I work for. Cockroach Labs, the creators of Cockroach DB, distributed SQL database. Um, I don't really get the point of these things at all. I, I really don't. 
I, I'm I'm guessing that it's got to do something with like making a key so that you can associate API endpoints with state in the front end or something like that. Kadobes, you bought a split keyboard on account of my blog post and it changed your life. That is awesome. What kind of split keyboard did you buy? Are you are you so ergonomic now that you can't even handle it? Uh, Kinesis, that is cool. Yeah, the I think someone else has that that I know. So if I call this like the, yeah, I don't get this, man. I don't get this. Let I, I guess suppose we could just sort of Google it, right? Redux action type. What does it mean? Basic and advanced tutorials, still valid. Oh boy. You don't have to, wow, okay. Wall of text, thanks for this, smells like fail. You don't have to define action type concepts in a separate file or even to define them all off. So small projects might be easier to just use string literals. Some benefits to explicitly declaring concepts in larger code bases, reducing boilerplate for more practical tips. Interesting, that's good to know. They're just identifiers that identify the action. The action names tell your stores what to do. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's funny, I thought you were like, I was like, oh my God, you really typed out quite a lot. Uh, okay. I'm still a little, I'm like mildly baffled at the point of this, but I guess I'll just kind of follow the pattern here and we'll do something with it. So we'll call this the cancel session, something like that. Um, okay, so this is gonna be cancel session and the payload, it kinda needs to, I mean, I really just want it to be rec, right? I don't wanna have to define a new object for it or anything. Uh, this needs to be the- The data bank's too big. I have to narrow down the search. How are you gonna do that? Yo, Pepe Storm, I thanks for the follow. Howdy boys, howdy Pepe. Thanks for dropping in. Hope you're doing awesome. Cancel session action. Do you call this thing, like what? It, what is this about, right? What is this about? Oh, I see, so call and put are a bit different. Call and put are a bit different. Put seems to be, Hold on, let's go back to the one that we were copying that actually makes sense. <laughs> Presumably the thing that we're making does not make that much sense, but it kind of seems like if you need something with arguments, you have to use this call thing. And these things don't really take arguments. So maybe maybe I need to use call. I don't put parens and then I, I pass in the request that I'm trying to send, something like that. Um, it still seems to be a bit unhappy. Yeah, it's TypeScript. It is in fact TypeScript. Um, well, it's trying to be TypeScript. At the moment, it's like, I don't know. It's like questionable what it really is and whether I'm succeeding at my task here. Um, but that's okay. That is okay. I think what I'm a bit, a bit confused about is just generally like, why is there, why are there these transformers? You know, I think essentially the idea with this thing is that when you call this thing, this is like a test, I guess. When you call this thing, it's it's like turning a string, which is the statement fingerprint, which is part of the arguments to this thing into kind of the like more fully fledged output. I, I don't care to do that really, you know? That's not like an important part of what I want. Cause I do think that like the person who's gonna call this in the end, they're gonna have they're just gonna make one of these protobuf request things anyway, because it's just the same type. Like there doesn't seem to be much point to rewrapping this stuff, you know? That's the whole point of these this, these kind of like duck types, I think. It's like these objects, they have properties of a certain name and you know, it doesn't matter whether you made it or I made it, it's really all the same. So 
I don't quite see the point of that, to be honest. Uh, yo, Kina. Kina42, what's up? How's it going? Welcome. Um, so I think it's definitely some kind of type issue here, I want to say. Redux makes your head hurt. Yeah, it's making my head hurt as well. It's cl complaining that no overload matches this call. The last overload gave the following error. Assignable of type, argument of type rec, I cancel session request is not assignable to parameter of type context. I don't understand this. <laughs> I do not understand this one bit. What is this? This is taking Oh, I, I don't know. 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 Create. Okay. What, what is this thing that is actually properly working? This is literally the API call. There's no, there's no like intermediary object munger in this particular example. And it literally takes the request message and it gives you back a promise. I like this. This is a lot simpler there. I don't know what that intermediate layer was, but I'm going to try to ignore it. So if I were to do it this way, I think the idea would be that instead of calling cancel session action, which I don't understand, I would just directly call this cancel session thing. And the thing that I pass into it would be what? That thing I think I need to construct. It's not the action at all, it's the request, right? Okay, I don't know. I think I got off into it like a weird headspace there for a second. <laughs> um, and this is this this argument is literally the proto buff request argument, which I think I have as part of my actions payload. I think it's just this, right? It still doesn't like that. I don't get that, right? This thing takes a cancel session request message, and the thing that I've given it is, yeah, I guess these things are different, right? One's an interface and one's a concrete. Uh, I mean, I guess I could make these, maybe this is why they do it all like this because this, this, everything gets a little bit screwed up and people want the concrete types or something like that. I don't know. I don't know, but I can just, I can just try to make a fresh thing. So I'll say, I'll say, um, I'll do something like this basically. I'll put it on top of the try. I'll say const cancel session request equals new cancel session request. Um, and this thing does not exist, but I think I can import it. And it takes a node ID, a session ID, a username. So I think I should be able to say like action dot, wait, node ID action dot payload dot I mean I really just want to set I really just want to send it like this and I think I should be able to do this right because my payload has all these types for sure and TypeScript should know that so that did work and then maybe if I now finally say cancel session request it should work yay okay that took forever but it did kind of work uh yeah monads for TypeScript it's a programming concept Ever heard of, uh, so Cockroach CB, it's a SQL database distributed. It's good if you want to have a database that uses SQL and can scale past a single machine. But you can check out more details if you want on the website and stuff like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So what happens in this case? You send this call and what is going on with these next actions? These are things that say whether they completed or failed. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, I guess this is maybe the thing that I was trying to do with these actions that I got a little bit confused about. So at this point, I think I would make another one of these actions to say that cancel session complete action, I guess. And it doesn't need to take any arguments and 
what is the type of its payload? It's just an action, I see. So it doesn't need to have a payload. Ah, interesting, interesting. So I can import this. And I can import all of this stuff. And then I get to return just an object with a type, I think. What's going on now? What's wrong with this? Type string is not assignable to type action. Do I have the wrong kind of action? Could that be the issue? Yes, it certainly is the issue. Get rid of that. This needs to be imported from TS loader. That doesn't sound right either. Maybe it is though. Sorry, what the heck kind of, where does the other thing get its action import from, right? It's just action from Redux. I don't know why the IDE didn't like notice that exactly, but that's what we want. Okay, and this is gonna be a different state key called cancel session complete, I guess. Is Redux actually implemented as a monad? I have no idea, it's a great question. What is a monad? Is it like a burrito? Okay, so then I'm going to say cancel session complete action like that. Now, what is this about? Invalidate statement diagnostics request. I don't think we need to do that in this case. But I guess I don't really know. The databank's too big. I have to know. Hey, YG. How are you going to do that? By guessing. M U S L 97. Thanks for the follow. And then it asks you to refresh the diagnostics request. Oh, that's smart. I see. So I don't think I necessarily need this invalidate business. Or do I? Maybe the idea here is that like, once you've canceled the session, what you want to do is refresh and ask for all of the sessions back from the back end. And that's what this invalidate stuff is about. Um, that could be legit. I mean, what I don't quite understand is when I have... Like... How come when I jump to this, it goes to something called invalidate data that isn't actually called invalidate statements diagnostics request? That something that has quite confused me about this situation uh, is that like a lot of the times when you go to definition in this code base, it jumps to something with the name that's not the same as the name that you wanted. Like I don't, I don't really get that. So if I go to API reducers, what do I get? There should be something called this. Oh. I think I do want I think I do want these things. I think I might already even have them, but if I have I should have like a sessions thing set up, right? I have this sessions reducer obj thing right here. And I guess what I want to do is basically have an invalidated refresher that's next to refresh. Next to my sessions reducer. It looks like I already have one for refresh and I guess I just need one for invalidate too. So I'll have invalidate sessions and this is going to be session reducer obj dot invalidate data. Okay, that was not so complicated once I understood it. <laughs> Did I get into React because it got famous or got a chance to work with other frameworks? I, I'm just using this because it's what's used in the code base. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily into React or not into Angular or something. It just happens to be what like exists for me already. TypeScript looks like sorcery. Yeah, it feels like sorcery to me as well. <laughs> Kita says I'm a wizard. I don't know about that. I do not know about that. I would not call myself a wizard, but thank you. So I'll call this invalidate sessions. And then I'll say refresh sessions. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, you guys. Is this wizardry or is it just following the pattern? That's kind of the thing. Okay, so put expect action with type field, which isn't defined in refresh thunk action interface. Wow. So it seems you do need to use as any. I don't know. I don't know. 
And then we get finally to our alert. Okay, this is exciting. This is kind of what I wanted to eventually get to, which is that kind of check this out. Does export function? No, it's a generator function, apparently. I learned that from somebody who told me it earlier. So a, a function star is like a, it's like a Python yield thing, you know? Okay, so back to reality here. Like if I go and make another statement that exists, um, and if I click activate over here, and then I click this activate button, this is what we've been sort of following the pattern for, this activate button. We wanna make something that's similar, but it says cancel session instead. When I click this, something happens, and then this little pop-up toast machine thing comes up. And I wanna make one of these guys. So I think the way that that's working is probably this create statement diagnostics alert local setting show true. That seems very, very relevant. And I want to make one of these for my session cancellations as well. Um, so we can try to figure out how this stuff works. It looks like there's a file called alerts, which makes sense. And maybe we've defined an alert here that it has something called a selector. And it has something called a setting and it's got a payload. So I make, I make three things. I need a payload. I need a setting and I need a selector. That seems to be the pattern. So we'll do that. Let us make it happen. So I'll call this the cancel session alert payload. Um, and it's really the same thing. It's, I've got to show Boolean and whether it, su it succeeded or failed. I guess instead of succeed or failed. Now, is this actually the, the text? Probably not. This is probably just like some internal key. Um, so actually, I'll probably just leave it as success or failed for now. Um, and then I'm going to make something called the cancel session alert local setting. And it's going to take the cancel session alert payload. Now, what's this key all about, right? What is this key all about? So a local setting, it takes a key, it takes a inner selector, and it takes a default value. Okay, so the key is just anything that I want. It's just a unique key inside of the application. So I'm going to call it the cancel session. Do I put a key at the end or no? Yeah, I'm just going to say cancel session alert. I guess it looks like I use this local setting selector. Is this a commercial application you're developing? It's, it's kind of, you, you can pay for it, but you can also use it for free. So how about that for an answer? The default value is show false. This is seeming pretty legit. And then I guess the most important thing is that we can grab this whole big baby and make our selector up. So we're gonna be calling this the cancel session alert selector. Um, and I guess I can get pull the selector out of the cancel session setting or something. I don't know, cancel cancel session alert local setting dot selector. And I get something called a combiner. I <laughs> vaguely know what that's about, but not really. Um, it looks like I need to pass in the right kind of alert here, which would be my... Now, is this something that I've defined already or is this something that lives somewhere else, right? Um, oh, sorry, this is just the name of a parameter. I see, so I actually just need to change this to be called cancel session alert, and then it should change in all these spots. I see, so either if this thing is null or it, its show parameter is false, then I don't do anything. Otherwise, I actually am gonna print out some stuff, I guess, or and by print, I really mean like make a box somehow. All right, so this is where I get to actually define some stuff. It looks like there's some structured information that already exists for this alert that I can fill in, which is really nice. Don't need to reinvent the wheel, hopefully. So. If it fails, I guess I can have some alert levels, warning, critical, or success. Do I want this to be a critical alert if it doesn't work? I don't know. I'll just say couldn't. I'll just Maybe I'll just copy this text because it seems pretty nice. There was an error canceling this the session. Uh, show as alert true, dismiss. 
So I guess, oh, and when you dismiss it, I see it. it just tells it to stop being shown in the front end. That's kind of nice. So I can say cancel session alert. Setting, setting, local setting, dot set show false. Then I do something called resolve a promise, which I guess ends the chain of actions or something. Okay, cool. So that's the failed case. Otherwise, what we do is we say, we can say session canceled, I guess. <laughs> uh, do I show as it alert? Show it as alert? Yes. Do I auto close it? Yes. Is it closable at all? False. So you're saying if I go over here and click activate, this is not cl closable. Where did it go? Oh, I think it's my window is kind of too small here. Yeah, I can't close it. So it just sort of stays up there. I don't know. Is that good? I have no idea. I'll just stick with the pattern. <laughs> you love the music. Did I mix it myself? No, I did not. So this this music is actually uh, from somebody named uh, Matt Churn, who has made a copyright free playlist for streamers to use. I really like this music. I feel like a lot of the copyright free music that is out there is not that good, but I really like Matt's music. I need to put a link to this on my stream info to credit him for sure. But if you want to check it out, this is the Spotify list link rather. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So I've made all this stuff. I've canceled the session. I have a little alert box for it. And I guess the last thing is that we need to set the right setting back. So I'll say cancel session alert local setting dot set show false. All uh, right, very positive, very positive. Um, let, I guess the next step is we need to figure out where this selector thing actually gets used um, and try to the use database, it, right? I guess it would go into my saga. Have to narrow down the search. How are you gonna do that? Hey, Pablo and By Root guessing. Guy, thanks for the follows. So I, I guess, oh, interesting. So we don't actually call the selector here. What we call is the setting. Um, so I'll, I'll say cancel sessions, local setting, alert local setting, show true status success. Yeah, I'll just do this exactly as such, except this status is failed. <laughs> um, I guess I don't quite know yet, like, and I guess I need to make an action. I still don't quite know what these actions are for, but I guess we'll find out later. That'd be my guess. So we'll say cancel session, Failed action, need to define a new thing, call it failed. All right, making some progress. I didn't name it something different. Uh, <laughs> Listening to the stream while you're playing video games just have this. Yeah, that's. I mean, I feel like that's a great reason to use Twitch. I think I use. I do something like that all the time. I like Twitch streams as background company in a sense. I think I. I bet a lot of people do that. I don't think that you're alone in that feeling. I think it's. I think it's a really nice thing about Twitch. Um, okay, so we have something called a saga. We have something called a saga. It's quite exciting. What we don't have is anybody calling this default action. And I wonder if that's normal. Uh, out of curiosity, what what do we use this normal action thing for? It's a mystery what this is for still to me, but we'll we'll get there. I'm guessing we'll get there. Um, I'm guessing we'll get there. <clears throat> Okay, so I guess the next thing is, when do we actually get to call this saga? By the way, who likes who likes the word saga? I really quite like it. I think it's such a good word. I think it's such a good word. It's fun that you can... Okay, so it looks like... It looks like we... Um... Oh. Oh, I'm beginning to see. I'm beginning to see what this is doing, I think. It's actually really pretty cool. So I think the idea is that, I think, I think, oh, this is kind of crazy. 
I think the idea here, you guys, is that I make a saga that is associated with the key here. This is this string key, right? And I think the idea is that then you go and like touch the key when the user does something that requires beginning the saga over again, I think. So that's why that's why I haven't actually gotten to use that sort of default action thing yet. Um, it's because this default action is the thing that kind of pushes a user defined payload into the key defined by this this type thing. And then the saga seems to sort of continue running or something like that, something like that. What is yield for? Yield is like, a, it's like a generator kind of thing. So Nas Doska, if you're familiar with Python generators, you would know what yield is. Maybe you're not familiar with that. So the idea is that like, if you wanted to make an iterator where it's kind of like, you have a function that's uh, doing some stuff and giving you back information as you're calling it, instead of having to do all of its work up front. Um, that's kind of what a generator is. That probably wasn't that clear. Um, but I think Python generators are a good introduction to what yield is about. Outer Wilds, that's an awesome game. I, I really like that game. You should definitely all play that game. It's super cool. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and make one of these. You know what's interesting? What is the convention for calling this saga thing? Statement saga. Weird. Maybe I just call it session saga. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can put like more than one thing in here. And right now we only have one, and that's why I don't know. I don't know what that's about. So this is gonna be my cancel session key. And the saga that it links to is the cancel session saga. Uh, okay. So then I guess we have to add it to our root saga too. I guess these sagas, they're just sort of running all the time. They're kind of like background go routines. I think that's the idea. I think they're kind of like background go routines. They're always running and they just block when they don't get anything to do. Something like that. Okay, so I guess the next step is now I have to just go ahead and associate this top level action with some action on the front end and then we'll get something to actually play with. Um, uh, right. Right? Okay, so in this other thing, it looks like, oh yeah. So now <laughs> there's one more layer. There's one more layer that we have to do before we can actually touch this stuff, which is to make these like dispatchers. Um, and yeah. So I guess what I'll do is I'll, I'll push this. I don't wanna really necessarily make a whole modal for it. I kinda just wanna have a cancel button. Well, do you want a modal? I just feel like it'll be annoying. Like if you want to cancel a bunch of stuff, do you really want to see a big old modal? I don't know, modal or not, modal or not. I, I'm kind of, kind of mixed on the idea. I just think it's gonna be a lot of clicking, you know? A lot of clicking. Cancel, 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 cancel. I guess you kind of need one. What's a modal? So a modal is this box. Like when you click something and a big box comes up and it makes you say either go or not go. That's kind of what a modal is. You know? It's just about it. Like, do I want to force people to have to click twice to do anything? Yes or no? I think the answer is probably going to be yes, you guys. Like, you got to... I mean, it's like pretty big deal to like cancel a whole user thing. So I think I'm going to have to say yes, you need a modal. Which is exciting. It means we have to build a whole other page. Haha. <laughs> so why not, huh? Why not? We're going to make a sessions cancel sessions modal. Wait. 
You need to be good at competitive programming to be good at coding. I completely disagree with that amp. I don't know if you're trolling, but it's a bad troll. Cancel sessions modal. Okay, so we're gonna... <laughs> we're gonna make a modal. We're gonna make a modal. How does one do that? This looks complicated, huh? This looks pretty complicated. I'll just copy it. Easy peasy. Getting spicy in the comments. <laughs> Nuke for fun. Oh man. Unfortunately, Amp Y is just getting completely destroyed in the comments here. Sorry, Amp. He's probably cackling. He's like, ha ha ha, I got these nerds to disagree with me really loudly. That'd be my guess for what Amp is up to right now. <laughs> What's a ref? What is a ref? Show modal four? I wonder if that's like a keyword that gets used by a bunch of other stuff. It's used in something called bundle.js. That doesn't sound right. That's kind of like the big compiled. Oh gosh. Should not have found usages of show mo. <laughs> okay, it jumped me to like a terrible giant thing. Is this code generated? No, it's not generated, man. It's not, it's not generated at all. It, don't you think it's self-documenting? Come on, activate diagnostics modal, it's simple. Dude, I think that this guy deserves, it, he deserves something, bro Hanser, you know what to do. You know what to do. Do you? It, I, I think we should time this guy out. He's being too much of a troll. I'm going to just do it. All right. <laughs> I hope you got what you wanted. <laughs> I hope you got what you wanted. I hope you got what you wanted. I hope you were trying to get timed out. I think you probably were. Um, all right. So here's a question though. You're about to do it? Okay, next time. Too obvious to folks what's going on? It might be, I don't really know. Active diagnostics. I mean, here's something that's confusing, right? Like this activate thing. So activate diagnostics modal props. Oh, that comes from from somewhere else, map, dispatch to props. Oh. Oh, I see. I should have timed him out for leet minutes. That would have been pretty great. The database yeah, there's trolls, big. man. Yo, Why nuke for fun, thanks for that follow. How are you gonna do that? By I guessing. appreciate that. Yeah, it feels undercommented to me too. But look, I mean, I don't know. So much of this is like boilerplate. I think maybe if you're a React Redux person, all this stuff is just like you always do this stuff no matter what or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. I need this stuff. This is the stuff that's going to bind it all together. I already have it down here. Um... So this is gonna be called cancel. Do I need to have a refresh? I think I probably don't. And when I get a, 
That's not right. I think what this needs to have is like a query ID, which is, what is the query ID or the session ID rather? I guess it's like a, this is kind of where I need to figure out how to pass these parameters, honestly. I think what this thing is, is it's like a UN8 or something. Sorry, what is that? Sessions, page. Smells like fail, what's up? Glad you don't work for NASA because everyone who works for NASA gets sent to the moon. Um, okay, so here's the protobuf definition for what a session is, and it has something called a an ID, which is something called a UN8 array. So I think this is what we want to be passing in to our sort of cancel sessions parameter thing. Wait a minute, but this is, this is, sorry, this is not like, I guess what, yeah, maybe this makes sense. This is kind of like the, um, oh wait, not a slice of things, because this is already an array. I think this is like, we're making a dispatcher for the button that's inside of the modal. I think that's what this is all about, <laughs> probably. So this is also gonna need to have a session ID, which is a UN8 array. And then I think it also needs to have a node ID too, right? Um, which is probably a what? It's a number. Then to dispatch it, this is where we finally bind everything together and we pass in the cancel, cancel session action. Oh, I see. So. Oh. It also, oh, I see, it also needs a username. Um, let's make this into a function that's not just a single line. Seems wild that you know, need so much boilerplate though. Yeah, man, I don't know, you guys. I don't know. Hey, Amaralakad, thanks for the follow. I'm just trying, we're just trying. We're figuring things out here. I don't know how it works. Um, and this is gonna take a session ID, session ID. Oh, I guess you could just go do it like this, right? Um. Is that not how this works? I don't. I always forget like what this what the syntax is. I guess I can use the fat arrow thing. too big. I have to narrow down the search. Yo, Rudy Queerog Ag, thanks for that follow and Falcio TV. Flux. I have no idea what flux is about, but that sounds cool. Okay, what's the problem with this though? What's the problem with this? Oh, is it because? Is it because this I cancel session request thing? No, it seems to have, I guess I need to maybe put a username inside as well. Is that the issue? It still seems a bit unhappy. Why? I think I need to, this needs to have the same type and everything, right? Is that the issue? Is that a... <laughs> I don't know the syntax of this darn programming language at all. 0%, oh, it needs to have a type, like a return type. So it gives me back a void. Okay, sick, that actually worked. That actually worked. Um, Type number is not, oh, so this is actually a string, not a number. Need to muscle in on the 3 p.m. Friday time slot to get all the sweet, sweet followers. <laughs> White papers on the architecture. Yeah, we got this this um, Sigmod paper that came out recently, which is, I think, a pretty good intro. You should check that out. Maybe Brohanser will link it. Okay, all right. So last step is we've got to do this whole business with the, I don't know what this stuff is about. Map state to props, map dispatch to props, merge props, 
forward raft. I don't know at all what this stuff is about, you guys. I do know what this export default is about. I learned about that last time. This is essentially you can have a single default export per file or something like that. Um, and then you can name it something else or it, you can it'll sort of like take any name that you give it when you import it from another file, something like that. Um, so here I need to put the cancel sessions modal that I'm making. Cancel sessions modal. Um, okay. So then now that I've got, this needs to be cancel sessions modal props, not ref. And I need to make props for this thing, presumably. So I'll make, how do we do that in the other file? How do we do that in the other file? Oh, we just, what? We like associate the props with this map dispatch to props things. Man, I don't know what this is about. <laughs> I don't know what this is about. How am I supposed to <laughs> export interface cancel session modal props equals export wait what was it called map dispatch to props <laughs> export type not export interface it's trying to do this when you don't really know the language i don't know if it really works that well honestly okay cool so we've got this thing now instead of having activate we have cancel and this cancel thing is something that we can call now um right or i thought it was what's the problem with this i have something called cancel here now why is this called map dispatch to props that doesn't really make any sense shouldn't this just be called modal shouldn't this just be called cancel sessions modal props wouldn't that make more sense i feel like it would i'm just gonna do that i don't know why it's done that way cancel sessions props okay so then oh right it's cancel sessions modal props because we're doing the modal component that's the whole point of this all right now, what is the problem with this? Why does, oh, we, it is working. We just haven't used it yet. Okay, sick. <laughs> Things are actually happening little by little. Believe it or not, it is for real happening. What is use state? That's another question that I have. This seems to be a react thing. Returns a stateful value in a function to update it. Okay. Okay, okay, so maybe what this is saying is that there's gonna be a single one of these modals ever, and we set this string, which is not gonna be a string in our case. It's actually gonna be this, like the, the information that we're really passing in down here. So this whole business, honestly, instead of doing this, why don't we just have this also take a, an I cancel request or whatever it was called. I, I can, whoop. I'll just call it rec and I'll call it the I cancel session request. And then the same over here, we can just pass in the rec as so. Statement is the default the value and step statement is the function you can do to update the I statement. Have to down the search. Been too wrong, that? thanks for the follow. I'm guessing. So I think what we want to do here is this use state is going to be of an I cancel session request. Computers hooked into over a thousand data banks throughout the world. Cannot find name. I wonder if the problem here is actually that um, this is an interface and it needs to be a concrete type. That's probably the issue. So I think if I make this just a cancel session request, no, cancel session request. What's wrong with this? All right, I just need to import it. <clears throat> All right, sweet. So I, I'm going to call this instead of statement and set statement, I'll call it just like rec and set rec. I'm not sure if this actually makes a lot of sense. We're just gonna play around with it and see what happens. And when I click okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say cancel and then pass in our request. That doesn't quite work. Expected three arguments, but got one. Oh, it's because we forgot to update the interface. Um,
the data bank's too big. I have to narrow down the search. How are you gonna Yo, Karova Milkman, thanks for that follow. I appreciate it. All right. I think maybe this can actually be an I. Kind of seems like it. I just hadn't imported it. Okay. Oh, there's analytics tracking. That's cool. Do I do I need to do that? <laughs> I'm gonna maybe. I probably should. I probably should. Seems like I should be a good citizen here. So I'll call it the track cancel sessions dot ts. It does kind of seem like you're doing like an enormous amount of boilerplate to make this stuff happen, but maybe that's just what it, what life is like. I don't know. So the event is going to be cancel session activation. Yo, malls, thanks for the follow. Uh, and I guess this will take the rec. Do I want to include this? I feel like the answer is not really. I don't think I need to include anything, honestly. Um, I don't think it's really that important. Just want to know that it happens, just so we can know if people are clicking this stuff. Kind of useful. Yo, Amals, what are we building? Uh, we're working on an ability to cancel a database session from the front end of this admin console thing for CockroachDB, which is a distributed SQL database. Um, all right, so we're gonna call this track, act, track cancel session, because we need to import it. We need to call it the right thing to cancel session. A shed to store your dreams, my dude. Now, what is this depths? I guess it's like every time this thing gets updated or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of neat, whatever it is. Oh, on cancel handler, use callbacks at visible false. Okay, so when we click cancel on this modal, we're just going to do nothing. Does that make sense? Now we have something called use imperative handle. And it's going to be set rec forward statement string. Now, this is something we're going to need to change because the arguments to this thing is going to be a rec, not a string anymore. So it's going to, I think we could just keep asking for one of these rec things all the way up to the top. I cancel session request set rec rec. Track diagnostics modal open. Uh, really? Why is there a separate file for this, dude? That doesn't make any sense. We don't we don't need that. We can just put it in a single file. I think that's gonna be less uh gross. So we'll we'll call this track. Um whoops, this is the wrong file. Need to do it in our Is this, ne is this necessary? I feel like the answer is no. This is not necessary. We don't need to track that, right? I feel like we don't. I don't really care. I just want to know whether people are going through with the cancellation or not, I feel like, right? Okay. Um... Okay, so now I guess we get to really define what our modal is. What I don't quite see is like what, what we're supposed to be returning in this little callback thing. Um, <laughs> I 
<clears throat> yeah, so what does this take? It takes an init, which gives you back an R. And an R is... I guess it's something's unhappy about the types that we're returning here, essentially. But I'm not really sure how we set up like the types of this thing in general, you know? That's a bit confusing. What so what is this show modal for business, right? Do we define this elsewhere? Oh, I see. Oh, that's what our ref is. Ah, uh, okay. It's all sort of sort of making sense. So essentially this big old uh, ref object thing needs to have the same type as our user imperative handle implementation. It's like a sort of object oriented thing. I think that kind of ish ish makes sense. So this needs to be a cancel session modal ref, which we did. We just need to say this is like a rec, which is an I cancel session request, which gives me back void. Okay, so now this is going to work out. All right, finally, we get to make the modal now. It has a visible, it has an on okay handler, which we set up, it has an on cancel handler, which we set up. Um, and the okay text will be cancel, the <laughs> cancel session. Um, uh, yeah, so what, <laughs> this is kind of a funny one. In UI design, if you if you want the okay to mean cancel session, what do we do for canceling the request? Like not canceling the session. I could call it never mind. I could call it don't cancel. Maybe I'll just call it don't cancel session. That seems pretty gross too. Um, <laughs> I bet people are going to have strong feelings about this, right? I don't know what I'm doing. All right, so the text is going to be um, canceling this session ends the Canceling a session ends the connection. Ends the connection? Ends the session terminating its associated connection. If you want to cancel a session, but you would click OK or cancel to cancel the dialogue. I feel like that's just, I, I like yes and no. I, I think I kind of like that. Um, whoops, what did I just do? Um, I, we have to see what this looks like in context. I don't really remember. Um, cancel the session. I'll try that. Connection. Uh, the client that's the that holds this session will receive a connection terminated event. Um, and we don't need this stuff. We probably need to put like a link that explains a bit more. Everybody knows that relational databases don't scale. Hey, Lithium X, how's it going? Thank you so much for that three months of tier one. I really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, man. Happy Friday. It's another rainy Friday. But uh, glad you're here. <laughs> Gonna be a React expert, I doubt that. Google's text pack is pretty legit all over. Confirm text, cancel, cancel text, cancel, cancel. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that. Um, all right. Okay, this is, I mean, I don't know. It's probably fine. This is looking decent enough, I feel like. Um, we got some broken imports. Oh yeah, I think I, there's, a, there's a new technique, which I think I can do which is called optimize imports. Aha, look at that. That was better than what we were doing before. Okay, so I guess the next step is just that we've got to actually pop up our modal and then we should be done. We can actually test it end to end. So we're getting there. Um, if we go to our front end, what we wanna do is probably have a little button on the right hand side, I wanna say, that's like cancel session or something. So we need to make a column for this first of all. So we'll do that. Um, at the end, we'll do something like, oh yeah, I needed to fix this as well. I'll do that later, but 
Um, so we'll make a little title area for this. Cancel session. We'll call it. Do we need a tooltip? I don't know. Um, cancels the associated session, something like that. What's up, Vulcan on Wheels? All right. Okay, so we've got our session info. What we need to do here is make a link to the modal somehow. Um, I don't know quite how that's gonna work. Cancel cancellation for some variance. <laughs> um, right, so to make this happen, what are we gonna do, huh? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do exactly? Um, I think if we go to the statements contents page or something like that, that's where we actually have, ah yeah, this is, this is, this is the thing I was looking for. Um, what is this stuff? Oh yeah, I was messing around. Man, I have way too much work in progress on this branch. It's like a little bit out of control, to be honest. But that is okay. Um, kind of looks like what we have is we need an anchor, which is just a little link that has an on-click handler. Yeah, what is this about? What is this about exactly? It's like... Oh, I see. So there's no re real reason for this like extra layer of indirection. I feel like it's just like done because it's done. We, we don't have to do that if we don't want. Um, I still need to figure out how this ref stuff works. I feel like that's the critical part. Like that's the thing that sort of links everything together. Um, it looks like the way it works is that you can add a, member that is a ref object that points to the ref thing that we defined somewhere else, something like that. Um, so we can do that on our sessions page as well and see what that looks like. So if we go up top, I guess, we sort of have like a cancel sessions ref. I don't really know how this works, but that's okay, I guess. And we'll pass in the cancel sessions modal ref. And I don't know. I mean, I don't know what this really does under the hood or why. Like, because it doesn't seem like we set that thing anywhere, you know? Like, it sort of seems like you would want to have to set this, right? But it doesn't seem like we do. Oh, we do do it. I see. So down in the constructor, we do something called create ref. And then where do we actually, but I mean, that shouldn't really be enough, right? Oh, and we stick the modal inside of a fragment. Wow. I guess I kind of get how this works. I definitely would have no chance of figuring this out unless there was like all of these patterns to follow, but I guess you got to start somewhere, right? So this dot cancel sessions ref is equal to react dot create ref. What did I do wrong? Capital create ref. Uh, oh, it's capital react. There's my problem. Capital R lowercase c. All right. And then I guess down when we actually return the page, this is where we want to add our modal ref thing.
Cool, thanks, Vulcan. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate you. So I'll put the uh, session, cancel sessions modal. Cancel sessions modal. Vulcan, thanks for that follow. I appreciate that. Um, right? And then finally what we do is we get to pass this little ref thing into our sessions table renderer, I guess. Um, oh, and I guess that's where we set it. Oh, okay. I guess that kind of makes sense. Like, in other words, when we... Uh, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> I thought I got it, didn't get it. Like... So we, what we do is we pass it as an argument to the function that makes our, our like table columns in this case. So I guess we can do that as well. So inside of make sessions columns, which I thought we had something like that, right? Where is that guy? Where do we actually define the columns in this table? Make sessions columns. I thought we had something like that. So here's where we actually pass in a an argument that is this um modal ref i guess so cancel sessions ref cancel sessions modal ref um, and then we pass in this dot cancel sessions ref right okay wrong type it it's actually a ref object and I'm trying to ask for just a ref without the ref object wrapper. Um, oh yeah, and I guess over here we do actually pass in the whole thing. Sure, whatever, I'll take it. Um, React.modal, no, react.ref. Okay, okay. For whatever reason, this is optional. I don't see why it would need to be optional, but we'll do that for now. Okay, so then finally, finally, when we actually are down here in our cancel session area, we can use our this dot modal ref, right? I thought we could. Oh, it's not a this. It's just a it's just a function argument. So we can just say cancel dot cancel session ref. Yay! We finally have it. Okay, that took absolutely forever, but I think we finally threaded through all of the magic that needs to be threaded in order to make this stuff happen. And I guess the question is. This is the little magic thing. You say ref current, I guess, is some way of looking inside of a ref. And then you say show modal for, which is the function that we defined earlier. And you pass in this request that we're going to make. OK. OK. We'll see. Is it going to work? I don't know. Um, so in our session, in our cell, what we want to do is make a kind of link. We don't want this. But we'll call it cancel session something like that we'll just say we'll just say cancel i guess um cancel session that'll be the, te the text of the link on click what we do is we get to say our cancel sessions ref dot current dot show model for current is not a thing why would that be did i use the wrong is it is it like a subclass of ref that i'm supposed to be using or something it's a ref object jeez louise the data bank's too big i have to narrow down hey master comp thanks for the follow by guessing. Um, a ref object. OK, then we get to assemble our request, which we haven't done yet, but that should be pretty straightforward. For a request, what we need to have is an object that has the session ID pointing to the session dot session dot ID. The Elvis operator? <laughs> I never I never heard it called that, but that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's a nice little thing, right? That's like a that's such a functional programming thing, and it's nice that you can do it in JavaScript. And then we just need to have a what is wrong with this? 
This is a number null, and this is Computers supposed to be a stringer a null. Data banks throughout the world. So I guess I need to, to string it, maybe. Thanks for the follow, John Andrew Smith. Um, and then I think I need to pass in a username, which I, this is, I don't know, I don't know about this. This is very suspicious, I wanna say. I definitely don't have one in, oh, I guess I do. But I really think it don't, I, I don't really think it should be the sessions username. I feel like it should be the, the like, it needs to hook into like the user interfaces, like log in session somehow, which I don't really know how to do. Thanks for the follow, Nicholas Cage. I, I think like it should be kind of fine because right now there's sort of some limited permissions that are allowed to even fetch these sessions in the first place. So if you can fetch these things and you're allowed to cancel them. So I think it should be fine. I do think this is sketchy and we should fix it at some point, but it's not gonna be now. I think at this point, hopefully we should be able to actually test all of this though, which is kind of cool. So we'll get rid of this. Okay. <laughs> I love how with React and like having the hot reloading stuff, as soon as you're done typing, you can go to the UI and like something will appear. So statement, I need to fix the title of this. Um, shouldn't say statement, it should say cancel session. It's a little bit stuttery, right? Like you don't need to have cancel session, cancel session or anything like that, but we can work on this. Okay, so let's make a, let's make a sample here. This is getting exciting, you guys. It's getting really exciting. So we're gonna do something like, we'll say, we'll make a transaction. Inside of our transaction, we're gonna make like a big sleep. So somebody's doing something bad. Like they have, they're holding up a transaction for too long and you're an operator and you sort of wanna kill it. So the question is, will this actually work? <laughs> I don't know. So here's my here's my session. It's doing select PG sleep a thousand. You can see the session's age is two hours, and the transaction stage is a couple seconds, and the query's age is a couple seconds. Soon as that's gonna go up a little bit. But if I click cancel session, what will happen? Canceling the session ends the session terminating its associated connection. The client that holds the session will return a connection terminated. Go for it. <laughs> okay, did anything happen? Horizontal scrolling is really bad. Yeah, I agree. It's just, I think, well, I don't know. So it didn't work, you guys. It didn't work. But that's okay. We're making some progress here. <laughs> now I think, I mean, we have the sort of front end set up. We just need to figure out why the API call didn't work. Um, Y'all, I'm going to be right back. Don't go anywhere. We're going to get this working. Computers hooked into over a thousand data banks throughout the world. Alrighty, maybe it did work. Uh, I kind of don't think it worked because this thing would be dead at this point. And this would also have like refreshed and shown that the session was dead, something like that. Thanks for the follow RZE Pendy, by the way. Um, I think what we could probably do is look at the network tab. That would help to see if we even sent any requests, right? So I'll try it again. I'll say cancel session, click yes. We get something super sketchy, method not allowed. Okay, so I think what we're doing is doing, oh, you know what the problem is, you guys, is that I generate, I regenerated the proto buffs, um, but I didn't regenerate the, um, the binary that's serving this stuff. So I think what I'll do for now, since I don't really want to rebuild everything, it'll take a little while, is I'm just going to switch switch the uh, API definitions back to looking at using gets. And then I think that should hopefully fix the issue. Um, so if I go back to my protos, status.proto, where did I add it? Where did I change it to post? I'm just going to change this to get. I want to fix this later, but for now I'll just uh, I'll keep it like this. Make protobuf. 
regenerate these definitions and hopefully the front end will now use get, which will actually be something that the back end knows how to listen to. But we shall see. We shall certainly see. Okay. All right. So I think, I mean, I honestly think we can just go back to the front end and try it again because all this hot reloading stuff is just so powerful. So let's reopen the network tab. Um, and look at our session that's hanging and see what happens when you click cancel. Cancel session. Okay. <laughs> still some issues. It's still doing a post. I wonder why that would be. Did I tell it to do a post somehow? I. Um, so I think this would be in my cancel, cancel session saga or something. Session saga, maybe. Is that the name of the file? Sessions sagas. Try to say that 10 times fast. You probably can't. Session sagas. So what we said is we said call of cancel session. This is a timeout fetch. I mean, this seems legit to me. What's up, I am White Knife? Uh, maybe I just need to like hard refresh or something. Let's just check that. Because I do think this should be doing a get at this point. I don't quite know why it's not. Um, cancel. Yes. Request method post. What's the deal? I don't quite get that. How, did, how come it's doing a post at this point? Maybe there's something right in front of my face. <laughs> I feel like there probably is. Kind of seems like the issue is that, um, I saw it right there. Look, inside of timeout fetch, if there's a request, it always uses post. So I guess I actually have to recompile the backend. That's fine. I mean, it's not a big deal. So let's just let's just undo this. Put it back to be post, um, and we'll just kind of do a make build. This is definitely going to take a little bit because uh, we've got a building the front end is quite slow because of Webpack. Um, so we can uh, I don't know what we can do. Do a little dance. Doing the compiling dance. I need something, you know, there's that XKCD comic where you like, it's like, what a, like people are fencing while their code is compiling or something like that. Like I need an activity like that for streaming. I don't know what it could be. I can't really fence, it's not practical. Uh, looking for common household objects. Suppose I could draw a picture. <laughs> do some push-ups <laughs> that would be cool I feel like that's one thing that I could probably have done a lot better at before quarantine have you guys like lost a lot of your muscle mass during quarantine I know I have too big. speed I run the game the search. I'd have to that? be pretty fast yo Euclid the Dark thanks for the follow um You lost weight, yeah, dude. I've, I'm down ten pounds. I'm I'm I've lost ten pounds during this thing. I can't tell if that's. I feel like it's a combination of muscle and like, just like I feel like I eat less during quarantine because I'm doing doing so much less. A guy from the offline world. Thanks for that follow. Corona equals gains. Goblin, seven kilograms. Contra is like nine minute world record. Uh, okay. You, I'll I'll, I'll watch you do the Contra world record. Um, I'm not gonna do that, <laughs> Portuguese captain. I know you have it in you. I know you have the systems too. You used to do weightlifting. Now you've gained more than five kilograms. Fifteen pounds, according to Spotlight. 
15 pounds. I mean, that's quite, that's, that's no joke. That is absolutely no joke. Other number of pounds. Um, yeah, I don't know. I haven't done jack shit, you guys. Like I've, uh, I feel like I like, I bike around a little bit. Uh, I go on walks, but I'm not doing any exercise, like actual exercise. I feel like before quarantine though, I also didn't really do that much actual exercise. Like I did, I was doing rock climbing for a while. I was doing biking. I guess I started to do like spin classes. Do you guys remember those spin classes? Like it sort of feels like something from so long ago, going to a, a, like a gym class. It's like not something that you can really even conceive of right now in quarantine. Yeah, you feel worse about no exercise, I agree. Running in no gym is losing all of your muscle. Yeah, dude. It's tough. It's tough. I think like the tech tech people would say you should get a get a Peloton, but I don't want to do that. I don't like have room in my house for that sort of thing. Climbing gyms are open where you live, Indiener. That's cool. Yeah, the, the, I think there's like one here that's open, but I bet the lines at it are so ridiculously long. <laughs> You mountain bike too? Got back to doing body pump at the gym last three weeks, but it's hard to get back into it. Yeah, man. Quarantines, we're all gonna be scarred from this. You know we're all gonna be scarred from this. Like everybody, like when, our, when, when we're like 70, 80, our kids are gonna be like, so what were you doing 2020? We're gonna be like, it's just crazy. Like you couldn't do anything. Like you couldn't go to the gym. You couldn't like go to the grocery store. Everyone was wearing masks and they're gonna be like, all right, whatever, whatever grandpa. Like, I don't care. Give me my tablet back. <laughs> or like, give me my neural neural interface to gaming back. More like, all right. So if we restart our node now, um, and what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? This is gonna be dead. Begin, okay, you're gonna be like, okay, Zoomer. Okay, we, uh, there's no like, I'm a millennial. There's no like good short thing for millennial. Okay, millennial does not sound very good. Gaming is going to be illegal in 30 years. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens now. We see what happens now. The back end definitely knows about posts for this thing. Oh shit, it worked. Wait, did it? No, it crashed the database maybe. Wait, what? What happened? Did I just did I just like control C it or something? I'm actually confused about what happened there. Let's try that. Let's try that one more time. How about? Okay, begin. Select PG sleep. Moomer. I don't like that. That sounds. Crashing the DB is a way of killing sessions. Yeah, exactly. I feel like this. I, I feel like something did go really. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Something really is quite bad happening. Okay. I don't know why that would be. Uh, so we'll do log to standard error here. Uh, oh, well, who's seen this before? This is exciting. So this is something dying without even printing anything to the logs. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. It crashed the database with the unit test pass. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is, this is looking a bit, a bit tenuous. Um, it's probably something that I did, right? It's probably something that I did. Probably something that I did. All right, so let's see. If I check out what actually happens in here, like presumably, it's gonna come live in this guy, right? <laughs> if the test says session needs to be killed, it won't care if it took killing the entire database. That's the most next level thing of all time. <laughs> I say we ship it. Let's just ship it. Okay, how can I debug this considering that it's not putting any logs? Maybe in the cockroach, ah, cockroach data. Maybe it's in like this thing. I feel like probably not. Okay, here's the thing. Slice bounds out of range. 
with capacity zero, bytes to cluster wide ID. Okay, so I guess the issue is that um, we're not receiving, I mean, it definitely should not panic in this case, that's sketchy. But I guess this, the issue is that this, uh, this thing, where's cancel session? I, I find this thing so hard to use. Like, what is this? Where is this defined again? It's plus, it's exec util.go. Status.go1, 1828. Status.go, 1828. We're full stack. We're full stack. That's what's happening here, you guys. We actually made it. We're going all the way from the outside to the inside. You have to love it. Cancel session. That'd be so enterprise, dude. Yeah, that would be enterprise. So essentially what's happening is that this request has a node ID and when we try to parse it, it explodes, right? I mean, you should definitely fix that. Not the node ID, the uh, session ID. Where does that happen? Where does that happen? Is it in here? This thing. Yeah, this thing is, this thing is pretty unsafe. You went 128 from bytes panics if there are not enough bytes. The caller is responsible for entering. You have to love that. You absolutely have to love that. Um, okay. I mean, that's fine. I guess what we'd probably want to do is just put a check here that says um, if session ID bytes not equal to 16 Turn errors dot, I guess it's false, errors dot new, invalid UUID. It's not an unchecked conversion. It's just like, um, we wrote this function called uint 128.from bytes that just, uh, it just asks the slice for the first eight and second eight bytes. And if the byte slice does not have 16 bytes inside of it, it will panic because it's a slice out of bounds. It's it's not really an unchecked conversion or cast or anything. It's just like, um, yeah. It's just um, people assuming the length of byte slices. I don't know, I mean, it happens a lot. I think it's relatively normal. I think we just were missing validation. Um, so we'll say invalid UUID, valid non 16 byte UUID ID bytes. Yeah, assumptions, exactly. You know what they say about assumptions? All right. So I guess the next question though is how come we didn't get any of those bytes? I mean, we'll answer that in a second, but we might as well re-get a binary that has these better checks so that we can protect ourselves for next time. No big deal. This time it'll be a lot faster to compile because, I mean, the really slowest part about compiling is either doing, changing like C++ dependencies, which we haven't done, or recompiling the front end, which requires the webpack and the packing all the webpack stuff into a big Go file. Another question is why it didn't, why it didn't, that error that was a few lines below it print out. This guy, session ID not found. I think the reason is that like, as soon as it gets to this thing, bytes to cluster wide ID, this is gonna like explode um, and crash the server <laughs> because there were there, anytime that you have like a invalid indexing into a byte slice, that's like a fatal death panic. All right, let's try this again. Let's try this again. But below that definition of the string slicer, Uh, oh, this thing? Yeah, well, so this thing, I mean, we weren't parsing a string. We were just kind of doing it directly from a byte slice. So it was just a different method. Yeah, it's okay. I see what you're talking about. It was just a different method, yeah. All right, so let's try again. Let us try again here. 
make a transaction, do a sleep, run the cancel. Okay, it did something. It said 200 okay. That's kind of weird that it would say 200 okay though, because I mean, all is not okay. Um, all is not okay at all. Oh, I see. <laughs> What's kind of funny is it gives us back the error, but it doesn't give us back an error response. So it's kind of nice, but it's also kind of terrible. Um, I don't really get why that's the case, but I mean, it's a little odd that we, I don't really know why this response thing has an error, right? This is like the, it's kind of like the, I guess there's two kinds of errors. There's like you misuse the API or like the actual response, it, the like request worked, but it errored, I guess. So I, I guess this is sort of a different kind of error and we need to have a way of communicating that thing as well. So honestly, I think what we just need to do is if, Kind of seems like send a 409. I mean, I think what we, we, we need an error code that indicates that you did, you, you sort of used invalid um, arguments or something like that. It's really this is this is sort of trouble. It's like we're we're if we see an error, we assume that it has to be like an internal error and and not like an arguments error. We need sort of a way of distinguishing between those two things. I'm not sure what the best is best way is to distinguish them. We are returning also this canceled information, so I suppose we could use that. That also feels a little wrong. The four XX or errors caused by bad, bad client info. Okay, that's good to know. I guess, I mean, we kind of just want to like, honestly, I feel like this cancel session thing should just return this thing. That would be a lot easier. Let's make that happen. So instead of just returning a true, a Boolean and an error, we'll just make this guy return the whole like response payload thing, maybe. I feel like that's fine. I feel like that's fine. Okay, let's make it happen. So um, we're gonna return a what is it? Status PB dot uh, server PB dot cancel session response. Yeah, none of these details. Oh, I mean, I think it matters. Like, it's nice to get them right, you know. So here was, we're gonna return, we'll, we'll return nil if you have like a big, like a, a, a major problem, um, something like that. And then, yeah, I see. So we'll return an error if you actually have some issue that requires like returning a any kind of HTTP code to the user. And otherwise we're gonna always return 200 and give the response back. So in this case, we're gonna return um, a cancel, sesh, cancel session response that contains canceled true canceled true this is capital nil and then down here we'll return uh error and then set it to this thing Okay, let's make this not so much of a giant one-liner. Okay, what's the problem with this though? Oh, it's a string, I see. So really we just want format.sprintf anyway. 
All right, this is gonna be a bit better. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So now I think if we recompile again, then hopefully, oh no, we need to actually change the call site too. We, we sort of screwed something up. So this is gonna be output error. And if we do see an error, we're gonna return nil error immediately. Otherwise we'll just return output like this. And we can do this in a one-liner. We'll say if, well, no, not really. Wait, we can just, we can literally just return this whole thing. All right, see ya, bro, Hanser. Thanks for stopping by. We'll just return this whole guy. All right. All right, I'm, I'm getting hopeful. I guess the next thing that we need to do, we can sort of anticipate our needs. Our needs are gonna be that we need to figure out why the front end wasn't setting, wasn't sort of sending the right amount of data or the right data to the back end. So if we run this again, hopefully we'll see now. Okay, this at least gives a real error back. No, it's still, it's still at 200. I don't get that. Computers hooked into over a thousand data Oh wait, no, it was I, I was looking at the wrong call. Uh hey S V M I H R, thank you for that follow. Appreciate it. Uh, we looked at the wrong Wow, I don't know what's going on. Let's let's just refresh this. Data backs, data backs, data backs. Okay, so he gives a 500, which I feel like is not quite right either. Yo, Prince BB, thanks for the follow. Yeah, I don't know, whatever. I, I'm not, I'm not gonna worry about this too much because it's all just internal APIs. I don't know if we really need to make sure that we're getting a 400. I 500 is really bad to return here, but I just don't know if I care. All right, so next question though, why are we sending nothing for this UUID exactly. Why is that? This request payload has some like weird junk in it, which doesn't really seem right. I wish I could like really see the whole thing. I don't know why it's just this string that's kind of irritating. All right, so if we go to our sessions sagas, I feel like what we need to do is probably, think about how this works, right? So if we have a request, which we do, we set the method to be post, which is great. And then we set the body to be to array buffer of encoded request. Um, are we actually data calling back, this with the right thing backs. ultimately? Hey, I Mark Stan, thanks for the follow. We're saying new cancel session request of action.payload. I mean, I guess I, I could probably just like stick a breakpoint here and see what we get. I feel like that might be the easiest thing to do. So I guess I'll try to do that. Computers hooked into over a thousand data banks throughout the world. Yo, Charlito, thanks for the follow. So if I, let's see, now how would I find the right spot to do a breakpoint? That's always an, a good question. I think, and I do have all of these crazy D 
debug tools that I've never really played with. I guess I could look at that. Wow, this stuff actually looks really powerful. Um, so maybe if I do cancel session, click yes, what do I see? I see a cancel session thing. It just says states are equal. Okay, well, that's not that helpful. <laughs> oh, here, here. Oh, this is cool. So here's my session ID. I have a no ID, I have a user, a username. I mean, this all looks good. The payload looks correct. It seems to have actual bytes inside of this thing. Okay, that went away. Wow, it's got a timeline? This is wild. This thing seems really advanced. I mean, I feel like, hmm. What's kind of interesting too, is that like when, when I do actually look at the networks tab, when I do actually see data coming from this thing, right? Like I do actually see, I don't understand why this health API gets called so much. I hope that's not something that I did. Is that a generator? Oh, maybe you're talking about that. Why does this health API gets that get called so much? I don't get that. Is that something that I did? Did I screw something up heinously? I don't know. Like how come this payload is so like opaque, you know? Oh, it looks like I could actually put a breakpoint here, which is kind of cool. So let's put a breakpoint and try it again. It's not, I don't think it is a WebSocket. So, all right, I've got my breakpoint. <laughs> I'm also clueless, man. It's not just you. It is not just you. Whatsoever. So in my scope, I've got this request. And the session ID is in fact a U and eight array, you know? It like seems fairly legit. What if it's somehow not the correct session ID though, you know? Like is that possible? If I go to my status sessions thing. The session ID that I'm looking for looks like this. I have no idea if this is correct or not. I guess it doesn't really matter. I feel, I mean, I think it, it's kind of annoying that it gets printed out as this uint8 array thing and not just a string. Isn't that crappy? Yeah, it's base64, but yeah, I guess I suppose I could convert base64 to to bytes or something and some tool. Base64 to bytes. Not to hex. I want... Yeah, so this actually looks right. I mean, I have this long string of zeros and a one at the end. So it looks like probably that it's correct. <laughs> um, so the next question I guess is when we actually go to send this data, how come it's not like working, I don't really understand that. I feel like there's something messed up with the way that these requests are translated perhaps. I don't know how I would go about debugging that, honestly. I mean, I suppose the next step is probably to like go into the server side and see exactly the bytes that it's getting, right? So if I go to status, PB, GW, whatever, this proto rec thing, I think is, is the thing that I would be looking at. Populate query params. Does this thing work with post data though? 
It does, including both the URL fields query parameters and the patch post or put form data. I think I just want to kind of like print out a bunch of crap here, honestly. I think that's going to be the next step for me. Maybe it's setting the content type to JSON and the server is expecting a form. That's a great point. I wonder, it's a good suggestion. Uh, Vitor Ray. Sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Duarte. Vitorines. Um, so maybe if I go to the networks tab, request header, content type is X proto buff though, which I feel like is probably the right thing. It claims to be X proto buff. I mean, I don't know if this is right or not, but let's print Let's print this stuff out. Let's just like, we'll just stick a print F print line. So we'll print out the rec, direct.form. We'll just do that, see what happens. That explained the weird stuff in the body. Yeah, that's a good point, honestly. Yeah, it's like some weird protobuf encoding. At least with this, we'll get some prints. <laughs> Maybe the prints will help. Print F debugging, it, it works. It's kind of slow, but at least it works, right? I guess the session, the, the project is a little bit different. S V M I H R. It's kind of like we're doing, we're adding this session cancellation stuff right now. So we're trying to make it so that you can click a link on the front end and get a session to be actually canceled on the back end. Um, okay, so if I run again, and I make a new session over here, I do my PG sleep. Uh, let's let's open the network tab. Well, I guess we don't really need to, but we might as well. We already kind of know what it's gonna do. We'll hit cancel gets paused. Okay, so we'll continue in the debugger. Nothing got printed. Does that why did why did that why is that the case? Did I do it in the wrong Oh, it's because these these things get automatically recompiled. Is that the issue? Ah, that's, that's a little confusing. Is there another place where we cancel? So we have request status cancel session and local request status cancel session. Okay, I guess that's my bad. Guess we've got to do both. That's annoying. In any case, I don't know why we have two, but I'll just, I'll add the print to the other one as well. Arg, what a, what a pain. Okay, one more time. One more time. One more time. Yeah, it's like IntelliJ Golang. Go, it's called Goland. Um, it's pretty good. I like IntelliJ stuff. JetBrains, I like the products. I just wanna get these form parameters. I just wanna figure out what they are. We'll be doing good if we can do that. I think we'll be doing really good. I did, <laughs> I recently got this like chair back headrest thing. And I have to say that for these moments in the stream where I'm just like, ugh, just compile, please. The chair back is really helping my mental state. So I highly recommend getting a chair back. <laughs> they use 16 gigs of RAM and you only have eight. Yeah, that is, they do use a lot of RAM. All right, so let's try this one more time. We'll run cancel. Wait, we need to refresh this probably. Deprecated RocksDB yet? It's happening. It's happening little by little. Continue this baby. Okay, so we at least printed some stuff out. We got a post. It's got a cancel session one. 
Map accept application proto buff. Uh, yeah, so here's something that's interesting, right? We print out all this big rec thing, but then when I actually ask for the rec dot uh, form, there's nothing in there, you know? That's suspicious. So it kind of seems like something is not really working, right? Man, this is annoying. This is annoying. I wonder if something is not really working with the like X proto buff encoding. I mean, I just, I really thought that we did this elsewhere, you know? Like, I feel like we've got to do it somewhere. This can't be the only spot that we do it. Like, I think there's this, isn't there like a login one that we do somewhere that has to be? That same thing. You see, there's this user login. User login gets sent as a rec. A user login request message is a proto buff. It has some strings in it. And it's gotta be a post, right? If I go to status.proto, login. Is there no login? Where's the login thing to find? Um, hmm. I guess I can just grep for it. User login request. I just want to figure out like what method they're using and how come it works so well, <laughs> essentially. Okay, so it's in something called authentication.proto. And this request, here's something interesting. There's something called body star. Maybe the fact that I'm missing this and I've asked for a post means that it's not it's not really doing anything with anybody and we just ignore the body. It very much could be that, which would be pretty hilarious. I guess I need to sort of look up this documentation. Google API HTTP, proto buff Google API HTTP. Is this like a gRPC thing, I guess? I don't think so. I mean, I think this is like a, Google API annotations.proto. Google API annotations proto. What does that do? Okay, well, this is not at all helpful. gRPC transcoding is a feature for mapping between a gRPC method and one or more HTTP REST endpoints, exactly what we're doing. It allows developers to build a single API service that supports both gRPC and REST, exactly what we're doing. Okay, so cool. This has got to be what's going on. Teach me how to do a post. How does one do a post? Okay. <laughs> body, the name of the request field whose value is mapped to the HTTP request body or star for mapping all request fields not captured by the path. Okay, that's the issue, right? I didn't specify a body. It's obnoxious, honestly. Yeah, the other ones do it. I just, I just needed to specify, like I didn't add this mapping in and I guess that makes a huge difference. Um, so the difference is literally that, oh, well, this is gonna be huge, but in where I have this post stuff, you see, I have this body star. This is saying like, I guess it's basically saying, give me all of the post parameters. Otherwise it just strips them out, something like that. I don't know, that's not cool, not cool at all. So if I rerun make protobuf, that's gonna regenerate all of these protobuf header things. And then I think if we recompile, maybe, maybe it'll work this time. I think we're getting close. I think we're getting close. I think that was valuable information we just found out about this post body star business. It's pretty opaque that if you don't put that, it's not gonna accept any parameters, honestly. I don't really like that. Like when would you not want to accept parameters in your post? That doesn't doesn't seem very common to me.
Oh, now we have to re webpack everything. Okay, fun. A post with no parameters is a get, you'd say? Yeah, I agree. It sounds like a it sounds like a get. I guess if you have all the information of the post inside of the URL for some reason, then maybe you wouldn't need any parameters, but it does seem pretty unusual to have such a thing. I don't see why you would want it. I would love to make something that makes, I mean, I don't know why this stuff is so slow, Webpack. I would love if we could figure out a way to make this thing faster. It's just brutally slow. The concept, the only concept of a non-get with an all empty body might be a put where you want to create an empty resource. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I suppose an empty, re I mean, I feel like that's kind of uncommon, like having a resource with no attributes at all. I suppose you could happen, you could have it, but. Yeah, having a post with no parameters though, I agree. That doesn't that doesn't feel right. Well then again, I mean I, I suppose like you could think of some situation where this would happen. Like let's say you're submitting a form, and the the fact that you're submitting the form means that you you don't need to well, I suppose you'd still need like some ID to say like what what are what user am I, for example, like what like what context am I, essentially? It seems pretty marginal, though. It seems marginal. I think by default, this thing, it would be better if this thing by default would give you the parameters <laughs> of the post and not make you struggle for it. But maybe it's just that I don't know how this thing works. That's probably what it is, honestly, more than anything else. Come on, little buddy. What are we doing? Okay, so cool. Little by little. Compiler does its thing. I need to have like one of those little sand gardens to comb, you know, as this is going. Just like gently comb the sand. <laughs> Just relax me. Don't stress out. The compiler is compiling. Don't worry too much. All right, so close. Now I think the bottleneck is like writing out a bunch of bytes to disk. It's like creating this binary and writing it down. It's like hundreds of megabytes. There we go. All right, let us go. Let us go. Um, so we're gonna make our session, make our PG sleep, go over to this thing. Okay, moment of truth. The moment of truth. You wanted one of those, but you have a cat and a dog, and I'm sure one of them wanted to play in it. Yeah, that does sound like a very appetizing toy if you are an animal. Okay, ready? Cancel session. Bop. Pause and debugger. Get rid of that. Okay, I think it worked. I think it worked, you guys. It's exciting. We got error driver bad connection and the thing died. Absolute poggers, my friends. Yeah, big, big poggers. I need to like get the, like, oh, I do have it. <laughs> Who's got FFZ? Who can see the pog face? Um, all right, this is sweet though. I think one problem is that like this, re why is this? Oh, I guess this thing reconnected. So that's why there's a session here anyway. <laughs> T90 nice. Who's T90? I like that, a little thumbs up guy. Maybe I should make a little thumbs up guy for my channel. I need, I have one open emote slot that I need to fill. Not sure what to put in it though. It's like a spider. There's like a literal spider on my monitor right now. It's like mocking me. It's like you had bugs in your code. <laughs> so I'm gonna hang out in front of your face. Age of Empires caster, but there are some knights emotes. That's cool. Well, this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Um, 
I think, I mean, I think this is, the fact that there are all of these different things that say cancel session is a little bit sad, but I feel like it could be a little bit tighter, you know? But I guess that's okay. Maybe instead of cancel, we also probably want to call this like terminate or something. End, cancel, terminate. Um, and honestly, like, to be honest, since eventually we're going to want something that's not only just cancel the session completely, but just cancel the query, maybe what we really want is this, this needs to be like an actions column and you can kind of click a little dot, dot, dot in the actions column. Yeah, exactly. Saif, totally. And then it can let you either cancel the session or cancel the query. But I might not do that. Why are there two sessions? Because there's just two open. Um, there's one over here, one over here. I just opened a new window. Um, the truth is that I don't. I don't think I have a have like a thing to copy for that. <laughs> and truthfully, since I don't really know what I'm doing with the front end, I don't really want to go too crazy. Um, with coming up with new widgets and stuff because I don't know how to do it. So I probably will avoid doing that for now. But I can ask somebody who knows how to do that to, to make me a pattern. <laughs> that would be better. You know, I, I suppose what we could do is like, maybe, if, maybe we could have like, this column could be called terminate and then there would be two links inside, session and query or something. <laughs> it's a little, a little bad, but we could do it just for the purposes of argument. Um, so like, for example, in our sessions page, TSX, we could have, uh, optimize imp whoops. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. What have I done? How do I just... There we go. Okay, I don't know what was going on with that. Anyway, sorry, big random thing there. What I wanted to do is go to my, I guess it's sessions page content. Don't I have something like that? Or no, it's all in this big file. Sessions table, it's called. And I wanted to just as, just for the purposes of argument under cancel session, what if I called this um, terminate Uh, let's not touch these. Um, terminates the query or session. This is going to be like the worst UI ever, but at least it's like something that would work. Maybe <laughs> we'll just call it terminate. Um, and Wait, what did I just change? This is a tool tip. I'm confused. What? Oh, this is the, oh, I see. This is kind of the title of the column. Okay, so we'll leave that terminate. And then down here, we're gonna have one anchor that does cancel session or I'll, I guess I'll, I can just call it session now because we already know based on the context that we're talking about terminating something. And then we can have another anchor that's going to return the, uh, I guess this would need to be like a react.fragment or something. And we can have two anchors. <laughs> this is janky as hell but so maybe we'll put the query first and the sec the session second and then we'll need to do the same thing basically for our cancel i mean would i really need to build all this stuff again though <laughs> like it kind of seems like i should genericify it to be either about the session or the 
the query or something like that, rather than having to like copy all this code. I don't know. Like our cancel sessions modal says, I don't know, maybe it's right. Like, I don't know what you're supposed to really do in, in this world. I guess we'd wanna, well, first of all, there's no link between, no space between these things. I don't know, I think this is kind of gross. Well, is it? I don't know. I don't know. The other thing that's a little confusing is like, if there's no active query, terminating the query doesn't make any sense. So like this should kind of, like maybe it's really that if this thing is, if it has an active query, then this should show up under the statement or something like that. This also needs to be clarified because yeah, this is like either the thing that's active right now or the thing that was run most recently. So that's like a little bit confusing. Another thing that's confusing, this says statement and this says query, that needs to be fixed. <laughs> There's a lot of details to do with this stuff. A lot of details. Yeah. I mean, I think it would make sense to have a separate page for this because it, it's really just quite different. I mean, like the, all of this text is gonna be completely different, right? And like all of the actual dispatch things are gonna be, gonna be completely different. I think it makes sense to have a separate view for it, separate modal for it. I just feel bad about making all this code, you know? Like it feels a little, a little wild. But maybe it's okay. I don't know. I'll just, maybe I'll just, uh... So we'll copy this, we'll call it the cancel queries modal. Um, and then we basically just rename all of this stuff. Cancel queries modal, cancel query request. Data banks, data banks, data banks. Hey, Heron Mark, thanks for the follow. I guess I can just sort of do like replace sessions with queries here. Needs to be in the buffer. And then re replace session. I, I'm not really sure why some of them are singular and some of them are plural, that feels wrong. Um, but we can fix that as well. Um, all right, so then we say canceling a Query ends the query, um, returning an error to the session. Cancel query request. I guess in my track cancel sessions. I mean, should I just make this like a track cancel? things just seems so unnecessary to have another file for this right oh but it's got this default function business that's kind of why it comes into play i suppose i don't know what the right style to use is here honestly i don't think this default is really necessary right 
Try cancel session. Like if I go to my... How come this isn't used? I don't understand that. Unused function track cancel session. Why is this unused? What's the problem with this? It says it has no default. Oh, I guess I need to put it in brackets. Sure. <laughs> and maybe I can rename this thing just track cancel .ts. Why is it called .ts .tsx? What is it? Source util analytics track cancel sessions. I'll call this instead track cancel dot tsx. Okay, and then back in my track cancel, I can make another one of these things called track cancel query. And so here's another question. Why do I have this big old, can I just inline this? Wouldn't that be nice? Then here I will say, I'll just call this cancel session and I'll call this cancel query. Okay. Um, and then in my cancel queries, I can import this guy as well. Okay, and now back in session sagas, I can add another saga, which is my cancel query saga. This the is pretty nice, big. I suppose. I have to narrow down the search. Hey, David Alcade, thanks for the guessing. follow. So I'm really, it's really just going to be so, so similar. I'll make a cancel query saga. It's going to take a I cancel query request, which does not exist. I think it does. I just need to import it. Also needs to be imported. Then I need to implement cancel query. A lot of boilerplate, you guys. I'm not gonna lie. This is pretty brutal, but maybe, maybe it's okay. Cancel query request. What is this message? Did I just, did I define one of these? Yeah, I needed to export these things again. Cancel query request message. What's a saga in the world of TypeScript? Um, I think it's a, <laughs> I don't exactly know, to be honest. I think it's a paradigm of making these collection of, um, I guess you'd call them. Databanks, databanks. Collection of blocking operations such that you can run them in a way that looks imperative, but it's not imperative. It does things with callbacks. I think that's the idea. I don't really know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm kind of just following some patterns that I'm, I'm finding out. I don't actually really know. It would be good to figure this stuff out, mobile patty. I agree. Yo, Chatelaine, thanks for that follow. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, look, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of show you at least what I know so far, which is that if I go to my saga, it's like, I've got, I've got this try and catch, right? And every time that I do something, all of these are blocking calls. This is like, you know, do an API request, do an API request, do an API request. And at any given time, I guess if I get an exception, I can jump to this catch statement. And I think the idea is that since these are blocking, I'm yielding instead of just calling them directly. And to actually use it, you sort of like do this sort of monadic take every business and it keeps iterating, keeps asking for the next thing inside of it. Something like that. I don't know, man. <laughs> Yo, Zempke CWT, what's up? OG Jake, thanks for the follow. Um, cool. 
So we've defined our new messages. Um, back over here, right, we were going to define our actual API call here. So I think now we can give a cancel query request message. Takes a timeout and it gives me back a cancel query response message. Right, and then we, the actual API endpoint, I think it's basically the same. It, t it has the node ID and it's in its kind of uh, URL parameters set. We can check that in our status.proto, which is the thing that actually defines these endpoints. And as you can see, it has status, cancel, query, node ID, just like the session one does. So it's basically identical. It's just uh, a little bit more code, right? So status prefix, cancel query, node ID, requisite any cancel. Okay, so that's good. That's good. Then we just need to invoke it in our new saga. We import it. Um, now we need to make these, these actions, um, which is a way of, <laughs> here's another thing that I don't quite understand, but it's essentially a way of linking up Redux things, like doing these actions with Redux state, something like that. I'm gonna make this a little bit more compact just because it's no need to have like a giant uh, five line thing just for this. We'll just want to redefine all of these things for our query. It's possible maybe you could genericify this stuff. I don't really know. I've never gotten the hang of Redux either, man. You and me both. Um, and then these things all need to be duplicated. All right, boilerplate, boilerplate, so much boilerplate. It is absolutely out of control. All right, so once we actually come to our new saga for the queries, we're gonna make a cancel query request from our payload, which includes this sort of interface of that protobuf is defined for us. Um, we're gonna invoke cancel query, which is that API call that we wrote with cancel query request. And then we're gonna call these actions, which is the thing that I guess informs Redux somehow that something happened, I don't know. Um, I think for this, we're also going to invalidate sessions. Um, I have to narrow down the search. <laughs> hey, Ram C, thanks for that follow. Appreciate it. The reason that we're doing invalidate sessions here is that the sessions endpoint is the thing that's giving us all the information about active queries and active sessions. Um, and then here, here is actually where we have these sort of alerts, and we wanted to define a new one. Kind of off topic, do you do you stop and think if you'd use dot or retype the thing again, like with Vim, you mean? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's sort of like, it just is sort of something that comes to your fingers automatically. Not a long pause, just a short one. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know exactly what my process is. I'll, I'll think about that as I'm, as I'm typing. I'll let you know if I uh, think of that. Here's something that's kind of interesting. I'm realizing that I never set up this selector. So when I actually click the cancel session modal that we did already by the way so this is what's going on like we're adding this queries one but for the sessions one that we did earlier the idea is that i run i run a query that like takes a long time in the database here and if i go to the sessions page i see this session here and i wanted to terminate the session i don't know why there's no space in between these i need to fix that but if i run this terminate session thing it gives me a dialog box I click yes. And what's supposed to happen is that it should really like pop open a little like toast notification over here, but I guess I didn't hook that up. Let me figure out how to do that. Um, I, I think I missed a step. Um, right. My cam is above the terminate. Oh, okay. Rip. Sorry about that. You get the idea. Um, Oh, you can't see the missing space. Okay, thank God. Well, that's actually great for me because I don't want you to have to see that. 
jankiness. Um, I guess yeah, it's this alerts thing, right? So where where does this this alert get used? That's kind of the question. Ooh, export cons banner alert selector. Selector which returns an array of all active alerts which should be displayed as a banner which appears at the top of the page and overlaps content. Recognition of the severity of the alert. This includes all critical level alerts. All right, so I guess I just need to add another one here for create or cancel session diagnosis. What is it called? Cancel session alert selector. It's possible that all I had to do is that. So here's the missing space. <laughs> it's possible that I had to do that. So if I do terminate session, click yes. There we go. Now I got a nice session canceled. That's actually pretty cool. I'm into it. I'm into it. Uh, okay. So I guess we just need to make uh, one more of these things basically. Just a lot more boilerplate, TBH, but what are you gonna do? Computers hooked into over a thousand data banks throughout the world. Hey, Dr. Suzito, thanks for that follow. Just a programmer approach? Yeah, exactly. Gotta get the designers up on this thing. Otherwise, I got no chance of making something that looks good. I guess I could just find and replace here again. Uh... Okay, right. And then the only thing that we've got to do left is add this new alert selector to our banner alert selector selector. I guess these selectors kind of nest, which is neat. So I can say cancel query. Whoops, why is that not working? Uh, cool. And then here I get to edit these to say query. Import that. Okay. And then down in my session saga, I guess I add another. Yeah, so this is not something I know how to do really. But I'm guessing what I do is I add another sort of take every to the list of things that this outer saga is doing. And then it'll automatically do its thing if it gets information from the page that it should be doing something. That's my understanding anyway. We'll have to just have to see if it actually works. <laughs> um, This thing is just not necessary, I suppose. All right. So then the next thing to do would be when we go back to our sessions page to actually hook up the, that link that we made. Um, no, we didn't finish making this modal. I think that was one thing that we didn't finish doing yet. Uh, so let's do that first. Um, or did we? I think we actually... Might have, yeah, I think we finished this. So I think what we need to do is go back to sessions table. And instead of just having a cancel sessions ref, we also need to have a cancel queries ref. Right? Um, and then when we use this down here, we also, we pass in cancel queries. Whoops, come back. Ah, what happened? Cancel queries ref. Ah, now here's a big difference too, is that we need to actually, I mean, honestly, like this anchor needs to not do anything if there's no current query in the session, which can happen. So for example, here I have an active session, but it doesn't have, it's not running any queries right now. It's like completely inactive. 
And so if I look at the web UI, I see the session's a few seconds old or whatever, and there's no active query at all. And if I were to click this terminate query, I mean, I, honestly, I think this should be sort of grayed out um, since there's no, nothing actually going on there. I, I don't know how to do that exactly, but. Um, I guess it's sort of like, I guess it's sort of like, we just need some more logic in this guy. So we'll say if, um, we'll say if session dot session dot active queries dot length is greater than zero, then we'll do all this stuff. And instead of having a query ID or a session ID, we need a query ID. And that's gonna be session dot active queries of zero. By the way, there's this weird thing where we can have more than one active query, but that's never really used. So just have one of them really. And we pass in the query ID. What is this thing? This thing is a string. That's kind of unfortunate. System sounds, it's still your computer. I don't know what that might be. Um, I guess this is session dot session dot active queries dot ID. That's annoying. So this ID is actually a string and not a UN. So we might have to like reconvert it back into a UUID somehow. Ugh. That's actually a rather irritating, I have to say. Oh wait, no, it actually takes a session ID. Okay, so never mind about this, honestly. Oh, the computer beeps. I should probably turn that off, huh? You're talking about this? I should turn that off while I'm on stream. That's a really good point. That's probably extremely irritating for people. <laughs> uh, I'll turn that off next time. Thanks, for that's a really good point. Um, I guess I could do it right now. Sound effects, play sound effects through. Oh, can you hear this now? I, I can hear this, but I think you guys shouldn't be able to at this point. Yay, okay, fantastic. Honestly, I don't think we actually need this on quick. I, I, I mean, this if, I think we can actually just do what we had before because I think it should just be basically a no-op. Hey, thanks for the one bit mobile, Patty. I hear nothing Appreciate now. that. You hear nothing now, okay. Love it. Um, is that it? Oh no, we need to do one more thing, which is we need to populate this ref. We we did this one. We actually need to call make sessions with the right arguments as well. But we're getting there. this, then this needs to be constructed. Cancel queries, ref. Okay, uh, maybe this would work now. It might work. And we also need to, right, add the modal to the DOM. See what happens. So let's start up a query, select PG sleep. Yo, BJ Kegley, thank you so much for that raid with 15 people. I really appreciate that. How's it going? What, what's up? I don't think I know you. What, uh, what were you working on or doing on your stream, man? Really appreciate it. Pizza party raid. Cool. Yo, you guys, thanks so much for joining. 
what we're doing right now is we're we're adding some more information to this front end of this database. We're trying to make it possible for operators to terminate sessions or queries from this UI. Um, I'm a total React TypeScript front end newbie. So the past couple of streams, we've just been sort of messing around learning some of this stuff so that we can actually add information to these UIs so people can do stuff to the UI. I don't know. It's kind of fun. I like this React stuff. I've been learning quite a lot. Um, we've been hanging out. Most of the time on this stream, we do Go stuff, SQL stuff, performance stuff. But last couple of streams, we've been doing React because I think it's pretty fun. Um, looks wicked awesome. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate that. Yeah, I do work for Cockroach. This is kind of like my my Friday activity, which is to do little side projects on the database because I find it pretty fun. It's all open source, by the way. Um, so you can check out this stuff. It's not, <laughs> one one person asked me on stream the other day, they were like, yo, is it weird? Do you mind, like, does your company get upset that you broadcast your work on stream? I'm like, that, yes, they would be upset about that if it was not an open source database, but it is open source at least. So that's cool. The computer's hooked but... into over a thousand data banks. Throughout Thanks for those world. follows, by the way. Redux slowly diminishes your will to live. I suppose that's fair. Uh, heard about it, but you haven't actually checked it out yet. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I think I do this stream every Friday and every Sunday. I do a lot of work on Cockroach, so it's definitely, it's, an, it's like, I don't know. I think this stream is like maybe not the best way to learn about Cockroach from the ground up. It's an interesting way of seeing what goes into it. Computers hooked into I often don't really say like, throughout the world. yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I probably need to get better on that, but it's not what I really want to do on stream. What I want to do on stream is just like figure out, you know, show what it takes to to kind of work on a database. I think one thing that's I, in my opinion, that's cool about databases in general is that you too can learn to program on a database. It's just like any other programming. It is complicated. Like it's kind of a deep stack and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, it's code just like any other. So um, if you're interested in databases, if you're interested in deep systems, like you can learn this stuff for sure. Um, and that's kind of what I like to like to do on stream, make it possible for people to see, hey, maybe I can do this stuff too one day. Um, anyway, that's my spiel. Thanks for the follow, R Shy Ryan. Um, so we were just about to test whether this thing that we added worked. So it, it'll be exciting. It might totally explode. I wanted to see, uh, we added just, we, we have this thing that cancels sessions and we wanted to see whether we can actually cancel a query too. So we have this query over here that's just doing a sleep. It'll never terminate until those a thousand seconds are up. And we, I want to see what happens when I click this cancel query thing. Cancel the query, canceling the query ends the query, returning an error to the session. Wow, that's kind of like a terrible way of phrasing it, but what are you going to do? Click yes, and then absolutely nothing happens. That is not that surprising. It took me a little bit of time to debug the first one that I added. I do think it'll be faster this time because I've learned quite a lot about how this stuff works along the way. Um, but let's see. So in the network tab, having trouble actually clicking the request here. But it says, it says query ID not found. That kind of makes sense. I guess maybe I passed in the wrong parameter or something like that. Is, is Cockroach better than Postgres? Uh, it's, it's kind of like a different use case. I think Postgres is a really great, really, really good database. Uh, probably, I mean, it's, it's like a, you know, it's a venerable database, man. This thing has been around for a long time. It's open source. It's got all these plugins, all these contributions, and it's really powerful. I think if you if you have a use case where you don't need more scale than what a single machine can provide you, and by the way, a single machine can provide you quite a lot. Uh, people forget, you know, computers are really powerful, um, and you can serve a lot of stuff on just a single machine database. And if that's what you're going for, you know, you should definitely be using Postgres. I think it's a fantastic database. If you are trying to scale, though. If you're trying to make a app or a website or a company or microservices that use sort of needs more scale than what a single machine can provide, it is pretty hard to shard Postgres, right? You have to either put some tools on top or do a lot of manual stuff, or it's kind of just like it, it, it's scale, you know, horizontal scalability isn't really built into Postgres. Right? The difference with Cockroach is that it is built with scalability in mind. The idea is that it's a cluster of database nodes that kind of behaves just like ordinary SQL, but it's distributed. Um, and there's a lot of power there. Um, you don't have to do any manual sharding with it. Um, you can kind of add nodes and it'll do that distribution, sharding, replication, and load balancing all automatically. So that's what's cool about it. If you need the scale, I think it's a good choice. Um, I don't know if that was helpful. Yo, Nice 2009 thanks for that follow. So let's debug. Why don't we go ahead and debug what the heck is going on with this though? Um, we know that we sent an API request, right? Because we did see 
this response. I'm guessing that, yeah, it sort of seems like we didn't actually add the right things to the payload though. So let's figure out what the deal is with that. Um, if I go to this api.ts thing, cancel query cancels the query with a given ID on the given node. It takes in a cancel query request message, which looks like this. It has a node ID, a query. Okay, yeah, I guess I passed in the wrong kind of properties to this thing for some reason. That was kind of a mistake. Um, I think I must have had some of the types screwed up or something like that because yeah, over here. So when I have this show modal for, oh, you know what I probably did is I probably just didn't set up the, um, I, did, I probably just didn't, didn't change. No, I did. It just does take a I cancel query request. Mystery. Is it a mystery? Yes or no. It's a slight mystery. This I cancel query request thing. Oh, oh man, look at this, you guys. This is sneaky. I have an import that's saying import I cancel query request equals cockroach.server.server.pb.i cancel session request. So it's just some like crappy aliasing thing that I did by accident. Probably the IDE did it and I wasn't paying attention. So let's undo that and uh, just import it as normal. And I think all of this should probably work just fine. So if I go back to the front end now and close this tab again, and let's see, is my my query, sleep query is still running. Go back to the front, blame the ID. Yeah, exactly. Well, I am gonna blame the ID. So now if I'm gonna run this terminate query guy, see what happens. Bop. Okay, still no good. I got excited there. Oh, I know what the problem is now. The problem now is that we we are passing the wrong parameters to session to to the actual like ref thing. Uh, yeah. So you see, even the like the type system even noticed. Um, the truth is that I need to be passing in a query ID, not a session ID. The more I see of TypeScript, the more I think we could just cancel chat. Yeah, dude, I agree. TypeScript's super good. It's so powerful. It's really like a. a I mean, it feels like a fully fledged, powerful programming language that you could have anywhere. Um, I, I like it quite a lot. A lot of functional paradigms like this question mark dot stuff is really powerful and really nice. Um, so what we need to have here though is like a bit more logic. We almost did this before, but we gave up because we thought we didn't need to do it, but we do in fact need to do it. We need to say like, if there are even any active queries on this session, which is not a guarantee. So I need to say if active queries dot length is greater than zero, then we do some stuff. Then we're gonna say cancel queries ref, show modal for da 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 da. And then we pass in query ID, which is session dot session dot active queries dot. You know, honestly, what we should really do is like alias this big session dot session thing, call it. Can we just call it session? <laughs> Can I shadow that or is it gonna get me in trouble? Parameter session with same name already exists in the scope. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, Mm, maybe I could rename this thing to be info or something. I just don't like, it's so duplicative and gross, honestly. Let's rename this to be info. And then we can rename this one to be, maybe you can say, yeah, like let session is equal to, I could say const, const session is equal to info dot. You know, isn't there some kind of cool destructuring thing that we can do here, by the way? Can't I say session like this and, and it, it will destructure it? Or does that not really work? <laughs> I feel like it should work, honestly. This is an I session. Um, and then over here I can say, does that not work? Somebody's saying yes. I, I think this is the syntax, but I don't, it, it, something is a bit unhappy. So I, I guess I must, oh, there we go. No, that does work. Now, that's actually kind of sick. I like that quite a lot. So we can just get rid of all this extra junk and things look quite a bit nicer, honestly. So the query ID is gonna be session.activequeries.0. ID. And before you yell at me about this zero thing, um, 
I think it's just kind of a bug in our API that we ever expect there could be more than one active query on a session. That's not really possible. So it's a little bit messed up, but we can't exactly fix it very easily at this point. I think I still want to like annotate this with a type. I feel like that would be the polite thing to do. I don't know why that doesn't really work. That's what I don't quite get. Like how come, how come the, this thing takes a session info, which has an I session in it, right? And I thought that in this destructuring stuff, you do, you are supposed to kind of put the type there. Maybe that's just not actually necessary and I can skip it. Yeah, maybe that's just not, okay, anyway, whatever. Uh, cool, so now that this is done though, I think hopefully, hopefully we should actually be able to have this work. So the query is still running. We hit, hit terminate query and what happens? Yo! Yo, okay, that is sick. Come on, guys, isn't that? That's just so elegant. Look at this. Run select PG sleep, hit the query, and it just instantly dies. I love that so much. That is super good. Super, super good. Um, and then we can cancel the session too if we want. And the whole thing dies. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, baby. <laughs> I guess one problem now is that like, well, first of all, this whole thing kind of looks like ass because it's like, I don't know. It's not responsive. That's not that's not on me. I think this was a pre-existing problem. Um, but I need to figure out how to make a space between these two links. Uh, that should be simple, right? Yet I don't know how to do it. Do I put like a? What if I just put a little p? Is that going to make a space though, or like a new line? Yeah, that that that's not good. Tailwind UI all the things. <laughs> I don't know what Tailwind UI is. What if I just put a little span? Do you really have to do that? Like, is that the only way to do it? I don't even know how to do that. NBSP, so like this. Maybe I don't even need a span. Yes, yeah, it's pretty, pretty do. Yo, it's Jay Phils, what's up? I'm just trying to make these two links, like have a space in between them, basically. No worries, dude. Um, and it feels wrong to use NBSP because that feels old school, <laughs> but maybe there's like a, a better way to do it new school. I don't know, or maybe there's not. Maybe you're just supposed to do it old school like that. I don't know. Um, all the consecutive white spaces combined to just one space. Yeah, I just figured like, I don't know, maybe like React would give you some like components to do that or something like that. CSS styling is the proper way? Okay, I can see that. Does that work? <laughs> I'll try that. It's pretty, pretty red unless you want to style the spacing in CSS at the margin. I'll just leave this for now then. I don't want to make it a component. That's wild. So if I do begin and I do PG sleep, can I still, what happens if I cancel a, a query inside of this transaction? Transactions age is a few seconds. Query age is NA. Query age is also a few seconds. The query is select PG sleep. I can jump to that. I can terminate the query. What happens? Bop, bop. Oh my God, I'm so into this right now. Uh, I feel like we're killing it. I feel like we're killing it. Yeah, one thing I wanted to fix, I, I didn't finish fixing. I, I, it's like, we. I really wanna be able to leap from this query here to the like aggregated version of all of the queries that look like it, which we also have a page for. The problem is that like, um, the link needs to be a little bit different looking because all of these things are aggregate. So they <clears throat> they don't have these, um, like constants are replaced with underscores basically. So I needed to like fix the link and I didn't get around to fixing that. I think I'll, I think I'll do that. And then that might, that might be kind of the end for today um, because I'm getting a bit tired, but 
basically the way this works is that inside of the proto buff we get a bunch of information including the active the, the sequel of the active query and then what i added recently was like the anonymized version of this because you sort of have to do this it's like the processing to get the anonymized version is kind of irritating you have to like parse the ast and like replace things and it depends on the types and stuff like that um so we have that from the proto buff and all we really need to do is make the statement link which is this component that yeah it's just i like half started to do this and didn't finish um but I need the statement link to sort of know that it can pass in the anonymized version if it has it as a separate argument. Otherwise, by default, it'll, it'll just assume that the input statement is anonymized already. Um, so let me just finish this. Okay, so yo, both Joe, thanks for the follow. Thank you for that follow. So let's see, the link to base your code URI component. So this is the thing we need to change. Instead of passing in props that statement all the time, I think we'll, we'll pass in link statement. And then if we have a props.anon statement, we'll say link statement is equal to props.anon statement. Um, and I think that that should probably be what we need to do to make this work. In the sessions table, we pass in the statement as such, but then we also pass in the anon statement as um, this whole thing. I guess we'll need to also do it for this last active query thing. Oh, we already did it. Okay, that's cool. I already added a property for this as well. So we'll say session dot session dot last active query and on. Otherwise, it's basically the same as this. So I'll just copy paste that. Um, anon statement is equal to session session active queries of zero dot anon SQL SQL anon. And then we pass that in over here. Get rid of this label thing, which doesn't seem to be necessary anymore. Then hopefully when we go back, this link will point to the anonymized version. Yes, it does. Okay, that's actually super sick. Um, cool. I mean, honestly, honestly, I want to call it. I feel like we've gotten quite a bit done here. There's more I want to do on this page, but I don't really want to do it now. You know, like I should really add the cancellation stuff to this page here as well. So it's not just in the table, but lots of progress compared to last week. Yeah, we've made quite, I mean, we've we've leveled up our React quite a bit. I am Jay Chang. What's up, by the way? Um, so it's it's gotten a bit easier to, to do things, I want to say. Uh, it just takes a little bit of practice, you know. I think I think with any anything, like you just have to sort of practice, and over time you're going to get a little bit better. But you can't expect to just like be great at it right from the get go, or anything like that. But the data bank's too big. Yo, to Gene Fitch, thanks for the follow. I really I appreciate that, that. By guessing. But yeah, I think I think uh, we can probably call it at this point. Um, let's go ahead and find somebody to raid. You go to BJ Kegley. He does a bunch of cool shit in five minutes, and then you got to call it. <laughs> oh man. Okay. That's sorry about that for the the, the double raid, shy shy Ryan. Uh, one plane. Feel like a troll for saying it again. Wouldn't that mean the deletion thing has to become a component? Yeah, I think you're totally right. The deletion thing would be a component. Um, I think basically it wouldn't be complicated. It would just contain the link, something like that. No worries. It's just funny. Fancy place with fancy folks. If you like it here, cool Gene Fitch. Well, I like I like I appreciate that you're here as well. Does anybody have anybody that they would want to raid right now, by the way? I, I have a couple of people under science and technology that I might raid, but I think I've raided these people recently. And so I'm wondering if anybody knows of somebody cool that we should raid. Um, otherwise, I can find somebody as well. But in case Here's you have somebody in mind, data banks throughout the world. maybe you could tell me. Maybe we could hit up this... Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know, it's a mystery. We could always, I mean, we could always leave the science and technology realm. That's another option. <laughs> I do like to do that sometimes. Raid people who play games that I like to watch. Mayuko is doing iOS stuff, if that's your thing. Yeah, we, we raided CM Griffin G last time, but you know what, maybe we should just raid him again. I like him a lot. So maybe we should just, maybe we should do that. Yeah, let's do that, why not? Let's do that. 
You're going to, that's cool. Well, I appreciate that suggestion. So we're gonna raid CM Griffin. Uh, he's a great streamer as well. He's doing, looks like he's doing some Rust stuff. So everybody say hi to him. Spam, spam the uh, one and only large data bank emote if you've got it. But uh, otherwise, um, yeah, cool guys. So really appreciate you all stopping in. Thanks all for the subs and the follows and the talking and everything. Um, I do stream every Friday, 3 p.m. Uh, EST, and I'll be streaming this Sunday as well, 6 p.m. EST. I'm trying to do that as a schedule, but again, thanks everybody for following, hanging out, um, and I'll see you next time. Enjoy your day. Let's...